Umpire Bill Dalla will be in charge of the centre bounce for this quarter. Umpires, of course, taking it in turns, and so it will be Kevin Smith for the second and final quarter. So here we go, the first quarter. Listen to that roar. First quarter of the 1979 Grand Final. Not a bad bounce from the umpire. Peter Moore tried to get the big tap out, but he couldn't do so. Perce Jones taps the ball out wide. Carlton go forward. It's driven up by Johnston to the Blues. Half forward line. McCormack's in front of Brown on this occasion. Oh, Worthington went over there pretty solidly, but the umpire called play on. Picked up by Brown. He shoots the hand pass, but over the head of Fitzpatrick. By gee, this is going to be slippery this afternoon. A free kick being paid, and let's see which way it's going. It's going to Billy Picken, who probably gets more free kicks than any other player playing. He just seems to be in the right place at the right time, Bill. And two 15-metre penalties being applied. So the umpire exerting his control right from the start. Pickens kick, dropping short into the centre of the ground. Morris is there, clumps there with him. Picked up by Jezelenko, but it's a free kick again. And once again going to Collingwood, and this time the recipient is Kevin Morris, the former Richmond player. The Bradley medalist has first touch for him of the afternoon. Edwards and Duell. Picked up by Davis, a bad hand pass though for him. Edwards again gets ridden into the ground. Umpire says dropping the ball. Free kick going to Jeff Southby. It could have been in the back. But umpire Kevin Smith was only a few metres away and had no hesitation in paying it to the Carlton fullback. Jeff Southby to centre field. McClure into the back of uh, Billy Pickin, but umpire Bill Dangle says, let's ball it up, gentlemen. And that ball up to take place a little bit uh, inside the centre square. Moore and Jones. Indecisive ruck work. Going over was uh, Anderson and Anderson to take the free kick. Bidding Collingwood long into attack up towards full forward. Mackay's there for Carlton. The high flyer, David Mackay, shoots out the hand pass to Francis. The Carlton fans roar. Francis is clear. A long kick. Looking for Johnston, who's on his own. Away he goes with the hand pass. Brown. A snapshot by Brown. Won't quite make the distance. Jesselenko and Fitzpatrick. Wasn't good talking there between the top Blues players. A real stack up occurs. It's a ball up. A ball up about uh, 20 metres out from the Carlton goal in their forward pocket position. No scorers yet. And we're at the two-minute mark of this 1979 grand final. Knocked out by Fitzpatrick. Picked up by Morris. Ball back to Jones now. The big fella gives a good hand pass out. And that's Armstrong booting it up towards the teeth of goals. Up they fly. It's punched out again. A chance for Fitzpatrick. Oh, well intercepted by Wearmouth. A hand pass out from Agro. And Collingwood get away with another one. And it's Anderson streaking away from Buckley. Anderson drives it long, looking for Renee Kink. Can he mark it? He's got the mark. And he quickly plays on, he gets around Klump and boots it up towards the full forward zone. Punched away by Mackay, it comes to the ground. Oh, sliding along the ground is Barham. Look at those players slide as the ball goes out of bounds. About 20, 30 metres around from the Collingwood goal. Two and a half minutes gone of this uh, 1979 grand final. And no score as yet. It'll be Shaw against Jones. Knocked out by Shaw, Mackay kicks it off the ground, it bites a mark. A mark there to Barham, right on the edge of the boundary. And he'd be about 30 metres out from goal. A very difficult shot for a right footer. Ricky Barham, the speedster. No, he nearly he hesitated, nearly went for a pass. He's gone for a pass to Rene Kick in a better position. That gives Collingwood a chance to score here. Because he'd be about 40 metres out from goal. There you can see the goals in the background. So he's not that far out. And Kick away from Klomp twice already. Renee Kink, uh, the danger player for Collingwood today, for uh, Carlton today. The kick is a good one. Is it going straight? I think it uh, one point. It veered off at the last moment. That's the first score of the match coming at the three-minute mark. And Collingwood go to one point to Carlton yet to score. Well, that was very, very close. Any moves, Bob Skelton, you've detected? Pete, I think both sides have lined up exactly as selected. Well, that's one for the books, isn't it? Jeff Southby at fullback, of course, that was where he was named. One of the best in the business, so no sense in taking him away from there. Oh, beautiful kick from Southby under the wet conditions. Look at that, almost into the centre circle. Magnificent kick from Southby. Olsen towards half forward now for Collingwood. Actually, it's out towards the weak position. It went up the side of his boot. Duel and Edwards. Oh, beautifully done, Bruce Duel. Using the body to perfection. Almost caught with the ball. Great pick up from Edwards, who fires the hand pass out. Looking down there for Barham on the run. Barham covered by Young. Jesselenko in there. Gives it almost to Southby. Back to Young. In comes Renee Kink. Used a bit of weight. Down went Young. In goes the weight. Brewer's in there. Young is out cold. 
But a fair bump, I thought. Careful, Rene, you're gone, son. You're gone. Very stupid. Absolute stupidity from Kink. Oh, you don't backcheck the umpires. You don't backchat the umpires. You'd think he would learn. So, a 15-metre penalty. Back behind play, oh, it's Peter. It's, it's on behind play because uh, right from the start, Ireland and Keogh were uh, into it. And uh, we see just in the background there, play's now being stopped by umpire Della. Well, Pickin went down, I think, pretty solidly in that lot. Ireland was there too. On the replay now, we watch as Kick comes in. Uh, and, uh, well, if he was reported for that one, I'll be very surprised. I because, think it was uh, uh, back chatting the umpire, Bob. Well, it appears that he may have been reported for Jezelenko. The umpire's going to ball it up out there on that uh, centre wing position, up towards Carlton's half forward. This is going to be a real ring-a-ding game, I'll tell you that now. Neither Ruckman got the knock out. There's Moore trying to get out. He gets a hand pass out. Umpires found a free kick. They're trying to break up play here because the conditions certainly make tempers fray a bit. Very tough uh, opening this match. Quite a few uh, fights for the very start of the game. Uh, there's Edwards and uh, uh, Dill going for the punch. Out to Armstrong. Back to Dill. Oh, Edwards collared Armstrong and it's on again. That's fighting now as we see the ball taken away by Francis. Out towards Brown. He's got the start on McCormick. Out comes um, Brown again. He goes down pretty hard. And the umpire said it's out of bounds. Out of bounds about uh, 55 metres around uh, from the Carlton go goal. It's on for Young and Old at the moment. Quite a few uh, little breakups. Moore got the knockout. Francis going after it now. Burn right on his tail. A hand pass coming back to Anderson, but he missed the ball altogether. This is Wearmouth now trying to pick it up. And back it goes there to Worthington. He's in trouble. He's grabbed. Got a kick out. And we see a chance for pick and grab too high. Oh, oh down he goes with Johnson going in pretty hard. And oh. down goes McClure trying to get over. This is a tough game, this one, Bobby. I'll say, Lou, and this is It'll be, I think, the side that settles down the quickest after all of this that can, might get the break. <laughs> we wait now for Billy Pickett to take that uh, free kick out there on that half-back line. The tension and the nerves are getting the better of the players at the moment. A good mark to Edwards, but it's a free kick to Dill. For interference, he pushed him. And Dill will take that free kick a little short of centre field. Oh, what an opening to the grand final, Dill. The half forward looks for McClure. Away he goes from Pickin. Oh, it's on again. Keo. Pickin. That's a score in the meantime, but let's get back to this wrestle. By gee. The umpires are really going to have to be on the job here. What an opening. And well, I don't think I've seen an opening like this since I've followed football. Do you, Bob? Not quite to this extent, Lou, when it's uh, <laughs> straight out, rough them up. Seven <laughs> minutes have gone. We've had two fights and two points. And the fight's about a draw at the moment. Up towards uh, Brewer. He couldn't take the mark. Jones taps it out wide. Oh, Carlton player got bumped too high. It was Buckley, and he got one by Brewer. Oh, gee, this is rough. It's a free kick to Jimmy Buckley, the little Carlton rover. Let's watch that again. Down he went twice. Righto, back live up towards the full forward zone. Is that a mark to Collingwood's Peter McCormack? The umpire has paid it. And the Collingwood fullback. As we said a few moments ago, maybe the side to steady down will win this match or get a break in the first quarter. Plump and Kink. Oh, great one-handed mark from Kink. That's three touches. He's got the wood on Plump. I wouldn't be surprised to see Dual move there very shortly. A long kick from Kink. He favours the torpedo punt kick. Mackay's in front. The ball knocked away from him. Who can recover first? Edwards going in there. Young's up on his feet once more. Gets coggled. Umpire Kevin Smith comes in to adjudicate a ball up, I think, at the half-forward line. In he comes now. Jones is there for Carlton. Kink there for Collingwood. It's knocked away by Derek Shaw. The umpire says a free kick to Perth Jones. Jones goes for a hand pass. Oh, bad one to McConville. Kink using more weight against Keogh. It's going to be a free kick to... Uh, who's going to take this? McConville. Peter McConville, the halfback flanker. McConville goes towards the member's stand side now. Looks out there for uh, Mark McClure, and he's got mark number two for the game. A hand pass to McClure. Gets it down to his teammate in Young. He's got a couple of nice bumps today. Johnston. Cleon says the umpire. 
And it's going to be a ball up at left half forward. It's about 50 metres out from the Carlton goal. And this is a tough game. I don't think I've seen one before like this in my life. Free kick here to uh, Fitzpatrick against Amor. He didn't even argue about that. He went on with the job. He's about uh, 50 metres out. Could easily kick the distance on a dry day. Not about a sort of a kick under the conditions either. Into the goal square. Moore's going to try and mark it, but the umpire says play on as Magro drags the ball away. Out towards Collingwood's half back line, and Jones has got the mark. Oh. A 15 metre penalty against uh, against uh, Morris. A short pass coming from Jones. Looking there for Brown, he's got it. Got the mark in the forward pocket position, Brown. Brown would be about, let's see, no more than about 25 metres out from goal. You can see them in the background there. Quite an angle, Louis. It's an angle, but at least he's on the right side for a right footer. He can curve the ball back in again. No goal or scored as yet, and we've played 10 minutes of this first quarter. And believe you me, it's a tough one. One of the toughest I've ever seen. Has it quite made the distance? The pack set themselves. There's a chance for Wearmouth. He tries to pick it up. They're all pouncing on it. I wouldn't want to be out there for a million quid. And the umpire's going to ball it up right in the uh, middle of the uh, kickoff area there in front of Carlton's goal. Oh, there's uh, Moore and Fitzpatrick having a go. Wearmouth trying to get out. He's grabbed. He'll have to get a free kick. He didn't have the ball by a mile. I don't think you could blame either side, Bob, Bobby. I think they're both having a bit of a oh, bad No, nothing's uh, you know, real serious, Lou. They're both really just throwing themselves in with reckless abandon the way you should in a grand final. There's the ball kicked away that time by Worth, and out there towards Brewer. He lost sight of it. Anderson going on it. Kicks it off the ground. It'll be a free kick to Carlton again. Against Kink. Against Kink, and the free kick will go to Klopp. I'd like to know how the free kicks are going at the moment. I'd like to say, I like the expression of kick there. He just nodded to the umpire and said, fair enough. <laughs> Seven to Carlton and six to Collingwood, so it's pretty even. Good mark for Johnson. Too good for Byrne that time. A beautiful mark. And he's about 50 metres out from goal. By Gully, you can feel the tension up here in the commentator's box. Short pass. It's a good pass too, and uh, Carlton looking a little bit better at the moment. And they seem to have settled down as we see Fitzpatrick take that mark. Only 25 metres out from goal. Neither side has scored a goal yet. And we're at the 11 and a half minute mark of this first quarter. The 1979 grand final between Carlton and Collingwood. The shot. Fitzpatrick. He's off target. And it's through for one point. So we see Collingwood at the moment. One point on the board to uh, Carlton go to a score of... Uh, two points so it's only a point the difference after what 12 minutes and Pete this could be a very short quarter and a very low scoring game the way it's going at the moment Lou Morrison McCondall or Brewer it is actually he's got the mark Brewer Brewer uh, Pete would probably be very happy with Melbourne at the moment for swapping in with Phil Carmen I'd say <laughs> because Ross Brewer a former Melbourne player in his first grand final there's Renee Kink still with Klomp oh by gee he was almost into his back there Klomp but the situation will be a boundary throw in on the outer side of the ground. No goal scored as yet. Fitzpatrick and Moore. And if Fitzpatrick's down, it's easy for Moore on that occasion. It comes out to uh, Little Shaw. Got his kick in up towards left half forward. Out comes Wearmouth. Missed the ball. Harms is there. Likewise, Francis, who gets to the ball first for Carlton. Francis up towards Fitzpatrick, who's doing very well on the ruck so far in the match for the Blues. A kick behind the play. A long boot from him, Byrne in uh, front, tries to knock it down, McClure's there for Carlton, goes over. And umpire Kevin Smith deciding to ball it up on the right half forward flank for the Blues. They've been doing most of the attacking so far in the quarter, but the Collingwood back line equal to the occasion. Johnston, tackled by Shaw, didn't seem to have the ball, the uh, players can't get it out, and once again, umpire Kevin Smith decides to ball it up this time right on the point of the centre square. Moore and Fitzpatrick. Moore got that one out. Brewer, Morris. Morris, a long kick to position to half forward. Out comes David Mackay, though, defending pretty well for Carlton. He got a pretty hefty whack, too. Mackay, centre wing position. Look at the heavy ground out there. Let's see who can pick this up. Magro goes down. That's solidly by Young. That's the square off. Picked up by Jimmy Buckley now. Oh, more weight being used there as Shaw goes in hard. There's no big pardons here. Out comes uh, Billy Pickin, he went down. Oh, McClure tries to biff him one and missed. Boundary umpire saw it, play on as the call, up towards half-forward. Klump tried to hand one out, but he missed two. 
Oh, gee, dear, oh, dear. And the situation is a ball up, I think, or is it a free kick? Umpire Bill Dalla calling for the ball. It's coming back to the centre wing position, and let's see what's going to happen here. There is no big pardons at all. It's going to be a ball up centre wing. OK, away they go again. The crowd really on their feet. Knocked out by Fitzpatrick. The umpire's found a free kick. It'll go to Fitzpatrick. He's playing very well indeed at the moment, Bobby. Oh, it started off in fine style, Lou, and I'm, I'm sure Fitzpatrick wants to prove to people he's a fa he, in his last final series he, fa he failed, and uh, he's really out to show them. There's a chance for Francis back to Armstrong. He's trying to get out. He gets it out to Johnson. Johnson has a long shot for goal. There's a go for Buckley. Macros there, pushed away now. And Worthington played it safe and put it through for one point. So the Blues go to three points. No goal scored as yet at the 15-minute mark. Collingwood, one point. Lou, I cannot remember a grand final where <laughs> neither side had scored a goal at this stage of the quarter. That's a 15-minute mark. Well, I tell you what, Bob, I hate to be out there because the strain and the detention. Up goes Anderson, takes a mark unattended that time. A good mark indeed by Anderson. Anderson there, the wing player for Collingwood down there at half-back. Has an easy run in for the kick. Boots at long, looking there for Edwards. He's too good for a duel and a beautiful mark. I just fancy that Carlton will settle down a bit better than Collingwood. They have at the moment, uh, Lou, but Collingwood still look dangerous each time they go forward. There's the kick by Edwards, looking there for uh, Weir Mouth. Oh, he's got one on the back. I think he played for that. He did, but he... Uh, I think he played for it, but he's got it. Little Wernie Weir Mouth, who was their star last week. But he's only about uh, 20 metres out from goal. Let's say the 10-year advantage in experience made a little difference. And there's the shot behind the goals. As uh, Weir Mouth comes in to kick. Well, we'll wait for this shot now. Weirmouth lining them up. We'll see whether they can get it through. The kick. He's put it right through the middle. And Collingwood getting the first goal of the match at the 16-minute mark of the first quarter of the 1979 Grand Final. Well, a great start now for Collingwood after they notched that goal, although it was from a free kick. I think it was definitely there, don't you, Bob? Even though Weirmouth seemed to play for it. Oh, there's no doubt it was a free kick, but uh, Weirmouth uses experience uh, with great advantage. Got in the front position, backed into Harms, and there probably wasn't much else that Harms could do. And But uh, whether he could help it or couldn't help it, it was a free kick nonetheless. We watch it on replay now, and uh, even after it, the ball had got left him there, Harms came right down, right over the top of uh, Weirmouth, so it must have been a free kick. <laughs> the roar there back behind play was uh, as the umpire's runner was bringing the ball out. Uh, he hit the deck. So well, just... conditions are very slippery, Pete. It's very difficult for both sides. Just the same, isn't it? I was going to say uh, that it's difficult conditions, Lou, but just the same, some of the aerial work has been very, very spectacular and surprisingly good. Fitzpatrick and Moore. Moore got that one out. Armstrong tackled by Morris, drops the ball. Free kick to Kevin Morris. He'll put Collingwood into attack again. They've got the only goal scored so far in the match from a free kick to Weirmouth. Out comes Derek Shaw. Mackay's right there with him. McConville likewise. McConville tackle. Harms. Oh, over he goes. And picked up by Brewer. Brewer snaps it back towards Davis. Off the hands. Some soccer tactics needed here, but Davis is tackled pretty solidly by Southby. And umpire Kevin Smith has decided to ball it up adjacent to the point post. First quarter in progress. 18 minutes. Still Carlton have yet to score a goal. Weirmouth. McConville. Weirmouth tackled again, didn't seem to have the ball. Umpire Kevin Smith says a free kick for holding the man this time. It will go Carlton's way, and it will be taken by Barry Armstrong in the back pocket. Armstrong adjacent to the small scoreboard, which shows a difference of four points in the match to date. A long kick from Armstrong up towards the centre wing position. McClure flew high, so too did Moore. It's in the back, says the umpire. And the reigning Brownlow medalist to take the resultant free kick. He's right on the centre wing position and will put Collingwood into attack yet again. He's gone for a short pass. Looks down there for Barham, but Jezelenko chipping in to take the mark. Good mark by Jezelenko, a real inspiring one. It's a hand pass, intercepted by Kink. Dill goes in, but Kink's there, Armstrong's down. And the umpire's got to ball it up at centre half fourth. Not a very good hand pass that time uh, from Jezelenko, a very dangerous one. Not a good piece of play at all, Lou. Up goes Fitzpatrick, doing well, a beautiful uh, palm down to Sheldon. Sheldon boots it back, Moore goes for the mark, taps it out. Going after it now is Buckley, he goes down, but he's tripped, the umpire said. And a free kick to Buckley. Buckley's out there between the wing and uh, half-forward positions for Carl. 
Ball driven down there towards centre half forward. McClure ready, but going for the punch is worth that picked up by Shaw. And Collingwood take it away from the danger zone. He drops it short, trying to find Barham. It's only got a bounce right. Go, oh, beautiful pick up. And looking for Rene Kemp, but it's too short. And a good mark taken here by Klopp. And oh, it's picked up by Duell. And Carlton get it going down towards their half forward line. There's a chance now for Brown. Well out from full forward, a short pass. Over it goes to Buckley, can't pick it up. Jezelenko can't get it. And uh, the umpire set a free kick to Shaw. Free kick to Shaw. He was grabbed when he didn't have the ball that time. Jezelenko not too happy about it. The captain of Collingwood, Shaw, and the coach and captain of Carlton, Jezelenko, on the mark. Oh, a hand pass over to Worthington. It's a kick off the side of his boot. And a good mark taken down there by McConville, who's turned out to be a very good player in defence. It switched from full forward. And a beautiful pass, and a mark there at centre-half back by Francis. 20 minutes gone, and Collingwood at the moment, uh, one goal, one seven points to Carlton, three points. And there we see getting away from Byrne as uh, Johnson, he's off like a rocket as he sends the ball over the centre-half forward position. Moore's there, he goes for the punch, Shaw backing up, Jezelenko grabs him, he's slugging to the ground. Umpire called play on, Pickett goes down. He gives a hand pass to Worth and he fumbles it. Oh. His kick is smothered and the ball is out of bounds. On the, there's a box on again over there between Sheldon and Billy Pickett. So both sides are at it. Oh, sorry. I tell you what, this is uh, Monday night at uh, TV ringside. Let's watch uh, that again in replay. And he got rid of the ball and... Uh, oh, golly, that was nearly a free kick, Bobby. I would have given a free kick to Shaw because it was well after, but back now we're, we're with Peter Moore. Moore going right on with the business. And a long kick down towards the half-forward line. Up is Duel in front of it, Edwards behind! Oh, great mark, he's taken some screamers in the first quarter, Edwards. And for a wet day, unbelievable. Edwards, right half forward, the former Richmond player. A $100,000 investment from the Magpies. Is it paying off? Punched away from Derek Shaw by Mackay. Brewer's there. And the umpire has decided to ball it up about 35 metres out directly in front of the Collingwood goal. Almost the identical position that Weirmouth scored their first goal about five minutes ago. Knocked down by Fitzpatrick to Buckley. Buckley up towards the centre uh, square area. McClure into the back of his opponent, Billy Picken, who is at, uh, at half forward, actually. Well down the ground, chasing a kick. And there's no doubt about that. McClure right into his back. And Billy Pickham, certainly a fiery character. We saw him in a little bit of a dust-up with Sheldon not one minute ago. Here he is, half forward, a little bit short of it. A long kick from Pickham. Mackay at the back, fisting it away again. Snapshot for goal by Olsen. Looks good, it's a goal! So Collingwood's second goal coming up at the 22-minute mark of the quarter. And that takes the Magpies to two goals, one, 13, leading Carlton, three behind, three points. Well, Olsen reading the play perfectly off the, off the hands of the pack there, knowing full well that Southby and Mackay were going to be fishing the ball forward. He read it beautifully, and uh, at this moment, uh, Louis, I think uh, Collingwood uh, you know, have got that little bit of ascendancy that uh, you can just feel that they are, they're playing more as a team and really settle down quicker. There's a go for Wearmouth to get it out, he's grabbed, but uh, Billy Pickin gets the kick back there to centre half forward, Duel in front, he's collared, he's lost it, the umpire set a ball up. Lost his headband too, Lou. Lost his headband, there's a ball up there at the, uh, a little short of the centre half forward position for Collingwood. It'll be Moore and uh, Jones to go for it. Knocked out by Jones, gap by Rene Kick, over there a hand pass to Wearmouth and he's away. And he boots the ball down there, looking there for sure, and a good mark to Mackay. A beautiful mark to David Mackay. Mackay's ready to play on, looking out there for France as he's found him out there getting away from Anderson. They're going around that uh, outer side a lot today, Carlton. The kick by uh, Francis is over the half forward line players setting themselves. Worthington lost that one. Picked up here now by Johnson, driven up there towards. Uh, oh, punched away by Brown. Beautifully picked up by Moore. And that's a magnificent pick up for a big guy. Out comes the ball now, and a good mark to Ricky Barham. Collingwood, as Bobby said, looking a little bit better than Carlton at the moment. Down it goes towards the Collingwood forward line. Chance now is a free kick. The free kick will go to Carlton, and it'll go to Jeff Southby down there in the back pocket position. Jeff Southby drives the ball back towards the half-back line. Punched out by, uh, by Ireland, grabbed by... Uh, oh, by Young, a bad one to Ireland again. 
and up it goes to the full forward zone, they all fly. Down the goes to South, but he can't pick it up. Shaw sure can't pick it up. It's a joke for Davis. He's grabbed. He can't get it out. It comes out now. And little Buckley finally pounces on the ball and takes it away from the danger zone. Back there towards Alec Jezelenko. He can't hold it. Wearmouth. He's picked it up now, the captain and coach. A beautiful hand pass out there to Francis on his own. But he's overrun the ball. He's got time to get around Morris. Plenty of spills and thrills as he spills away from him and drives him up there looking for McClure. Off the top of the pack, Magro going through. Kicked off the ground by Byrne. Back over to Olsen. A hand pass to the wrong man as Sheldon's got it now. And Buckley slung Olsen to the ground. It's on between those two now. They're having a box on at half forward. And towards the full forward zone. It's a mark to Carton. Fitzpatrick has got it. I was watching the fight. But Fitzpatrick is directly in front and should not miss. He should be able to register Carlton's first goal. They've only scored three points so far, and we're into the time-on period of the first quarter. Road scholar, Mike Fitzpatrick. 20 metres out, directly in front. In he comes, fires. Oh, what's he done with it? It looks all right, I think. Hit the post! Oh, dear, oh, dear. Hit the post, four points to Carlton. Maybe it's not going to be their day. Early days yet, four points plays 13. Nine points in favour of the Magpies, time on in the first quarter. Set a half back. Brewer was there. Anderson picks it up well for a wet day. Anderson's pass, looking for Rene Kink. Clomps right there with him. Clomp out, uh, Kink out, manoeuvres him though, the big fella. Gets rid of the ball, umpire Bill Dale says play on. Duel picks it up cleanly in front of Edwards this time. They're having a great duel, aren't they? Up towards the half-forward line, are pushing the backs, says the umpire. They'll go Carlton's way and be taken by Johnston, I think. Johnston with the free kick, right half-forward. A little bit short of the half-forward line, perhaps. A long kick needed here. He's gone towards uh, Fitzpatrick. He couldn't take that one, though. He was caught when not in possession. A Collingwood free kick will go to Andrew Ireland. Magro. The Carlton supporters don't like him. Magro short pass out to Ricky Barham. Let's see if this beatster can pick it up now. Away he goes. Oh, beautifully done, Ricky Barron gets around Young superbly. In he comes now, he'll fire at the goals, I think. No, he's gone for a pass. Up towards Kink, who's now Mudbus batted. Edwards is there. Oh, free kick! He is 30 metres out, directly in front of goal, and will have a chance to bring up Collingwood's third, as the clock shows 27 minutes gone in the quarter. Collingwood's two goals, one from Weirmouth, a free kick, the other a beautiful snapshot from Russell Olsen, and now Alan Edwards, who's been possibly the best aerialist in the match to date with some screamers at half forward. The Magpie's looking good. That's the shot from our camera crane. In he comes, Edwards, 35 metres out, directly in front, Jones on the mark, he fires, go umpire moving across, I think he may have missed it, it's one point. So, in the 1979 Grand Final, it's Collingwood 2-2, and Carlton four behinds, four points. 27 and a half minutes gone of uh, this first quarter. Short pass by, uh, by South, but he's found uh, Jezelenko. He's grabbed, he gets it along the ground. Moore can't pick it up. Jones goes for a soccer job down there. And a, mark, a beautiful mark to Billy Pickett. A magnificent mark. Billy Pickett out there on the wing position. He boots the ball long over the uh, half-forward line. The pack fly. Punched out to Jezelenko again. Scouting out well. And he boots. There's the siren for the end of the quarter going. 28 minutes. And at quarter time, we see Collingwood. Two goals, 2 14 to North Mel uh, to Carlton, I should say, four points only. You get that used to North Melbourne playing in the finals. You think they're there all the time. So far, a very even first quarter, and if you ask me for an opinion on who was going to win after that quarter, I wouldn't be going to judge. No, you certainly wouldn't be, and uh, conditions uh, round about the centre bounce area is quite, uh, quite good, actually, but uh, round the wing positions, the half-forward line, the full-forward lines of both ends of the ground, very, very heavy indeed, but we've seen some beautiful pickups, particularly the couple by Ricky Barham out there on this member's side of the ground in that quarter. Just Very a tough game indeed, and uh, I tell you what, I'm glad I'm sitting up here in the commentator's box, Peter. There'll be a few sore players afterwards, I think, Lou. We're just say that again. Uh, set for the second quarter. Well, I think both sides realise, what's it matter? What the hell? This is uh, the end of the season, it's do or die for both of us. Here we go for the second quarter of the 1979 Grand Final. 
Umpire Kevin Smith coming in to bounce the ball to start the term. Moore, a long tap out, picked up by Klump and tackled solidly. Over goes Edwards, an accidental trip. So no free kick payable there. And the umpire wisely deciding to ball it up. <laughs> ball up at uh, Collingwood centre half forward. Moore got high, a free kick to Perce Jones though. For on the shoulder. And Jones to take the free kick at centre half back. He's gone for a short pass, gets it over to Southby, who has to kick it quickly. A high torpedo punt kick looking down there for McClure. Picked up by Trevor Keogh, who's grabbed, but not in position. I would say Keogh's free kick, I think. It's going the other way to uh, Ray Byrne. That's an interesting one. Byrne. Kink. And missed by Kink. McConville tackle. Duel to Jones. Armstrong. And up by Kevin Smith. Says it's a push in the back to Dennis Banks. And Banks to take the free kick. Brewer on his own. Brewer about 55 metres out on a fairly acute angle. Would need to be a very good kick today to score from there. The former Melbourne player. In he comes, the umpire speaking to a couple of players in the goal square. That's Harms and Shaw. Brewer fires. That's not a bad kick. Edwards is behind Duel. Almost took the mark, but it off the hands and threw for one behind. And let's check the score now. It's Collingwood, two goals, three, 15. They still lead Carlton, four behind, four points. The umpire coming in again to have a word to Ray Shaw. I would say that's about your last warning, Ray. <laughs> Jeff Southby was the ball to kick it out from fullback. Still tempers a little bit frayed as Carlton's ace defender puts the ball back into play. He goes straight up the centre of the ground. Big pack flies and the mark is taken by Olsen. A Carlton reject, if we can use the word. It's not a polite term, but I guess it's applicable. But Olsen's certainly making his uh, presence felt here today. He's got one goal on the ball already. Edwards and Dool again, picked up by uh, Davis and steps truly. He's put it through. Magnificent goal that time by Davis. Read the play beautifully, pounced on that and put it through for full points. I noticed, Bobby, that uh, Banks is on the ground for this quarter and uh, Derek Shaw off the ground. And already the move has paid um, dividends because Ross Brewer, uh, leading perfectly, got away from uh, David Mackay. Uh, I think Mackay, you know, would be... It's a good move by Tommy Hafey because Derek Shaw playing right into the hands of Mackay, whereas I don't think players like that, like a, a, someone who acts like a full forward and leads, dashes here and dashes there. But Collingwood at the moment looking more dangerous up forward than Carlton. Carlton, uh, you know, although they've had many kicks, Brown and Fitzpatrick and co, they haven't looked penetrating. Three minutes gone on the Magpies lead by 17 points in the second quarter. Jones gets the tap out. Has a go for Armstrong. He threw that away. Out towards Young. He can't pick it up. They pass. Look at the mud flying up there. By golly, it's like uh, Saturday night at the dirt track, isn't it, uh, Peter? Mud track. Or the mud track. It'll be Moore and Jones to go for the knockout. The umpire throws it up. Knocked out by Moore. Barham tries to get it out to Banks. He tries to smother it, but that's a, it looks like it could come out to Barham and kicked off his side of his boot over towards centre half for a chance for Klump. He grabs it on the, on the rebound that time at centre half back. A long kick over to the centre half forward. Byrne goes for the punch. It's successful. The ball out wide. Going after it now is Francis. Anderson's right on his tail. A hand pass over to East Grant McClure, but he recovers beautifully. And he goes back again. Throws the ball away. Down it comes. Picked up by Keogh. Over there looking for Fitzpatrick. Jezalinko's got it. And he's well within kicking distance. A chance to kick Carlton's first goal of the match. And that'll come at the four and a half minute mark of the second quarter. They certainly need one, don't they? Well, they certainly need one. He's only about uh, 25 metres out. Not a very difficult angle. You can see the goals there on the background. The opportunity, Lou, to show real leadership. Well, he's got to put this one through to lift the team because they're flagging by 17 points. That's off the side of his boot. And they still haven't scored a goal, Carlton, at the four and a half minute mark. Carlton on the board, five up uh, behinds to Collingwood, three goals, three, 21. A lead of 16 points, approaching the five-minute mark of this uh, second quarter. The ball back into play, it's a long kick by McCormack. Oh, nearly a mark that time to McConville. They pounce on the ball out there. They're all having a go, a stack up there, and the umpires decided to ball it up. It's on the edge of the square, towards Carlton's half-forward line. It's about 80 metres out from their goal. Jones and Moore again. Knocked out by Moore. Short kick by Johnson. A high kick by Buckley. McClure at the back goes the punch. Has a chance for Jezalenko to pick it up. 
Rodney Taylor's Weirmouth, a beautiful hand pass out to Francis. And another short pass coming out, but it's a bit too wide for Sheldon. It'll beat him and go over the line. Magro was right on his tail. It's out of bounds about 30 metres around from the Carlton. Uh, full forward zone there. And a chance now for Carlton to score. Now they certainly uh, could do with one because they're lagging at the moment. Fitzpatrick to Buckley who snaps but that was beautifully smothered another chance for the Blues here but the Collingwood defenders are everywhere at the moment it's in the back to Olsen there's a Woody kick to goal and now he's on the back line Morris in front of Fitzpatrick the Magpies not having their feathers really ruffled after that first quarter to do Kevin Morris center wing up goes Klopp in front of Renee Kink this time and pushes the ball towards the boundary line and it'll be throw in in the middle of the players interchange area. I tell you what, Bob, he's uh, got uh, Kink uh, rather well covered at the moment. He has settled down very well, much since the first, uh, so I'll call it, ten minutes. Jones looking for a free kick and gets one. Looking a little bit proppy on that ankle too, he, Peter. He's a little bit slow, yes, I'm not surprised. In he comes, big purse. Not a good kick from Jones. Olsen, Jesselenko and McClure over the top was Picken and picked up by Barry Armstrong the Carlton Ruck Rover Armstrong towards half forward knocked away Magro Keogh Keogh runs into the open goal fires it to Grubber offline and one point and the Carlton forward line looking anything but good so the Blues still to score a major six behind six points they trail by 15 the Magpies total of 3-3-21 as we await Kevin Worthington he favours the member stand side, looking for more, and he takes the mark. The Brownlow medalist. No presentation to him today, of course, he's involved in the match. He was presented the other day, no lap of honour. Likewise, Edwards, Weirmouth. Away he goes, running Weirmouth. Keeps the ball in play cleverly, but around the boundary line. No, he doesn't. By gee, that breeze took it around. That wasn't a bad kick, it was going to land about 10 metres inside, but it's a penalty-free kick to David Mackay who spent all the game to date in the back pocket. Mackay, one of the best aerialists in the VFL competition. Knocked down to Buckley and Weirmouth. Buckley, cleverly out of the pack, looks for Duel. Well shepherded by Duel and gets his kick in. Jimmy Buckley, well played. Jesselenko, a chance for him. Not the skipper's day so far, but that was cleverly done, wasn't it? Up towards the uh, centre wing it goes. Plenty of weight on the packs there. And on the shoulder, says umpire Kevin Smith. It's a free kick, but which way? Let's see. Andrew Ireland. Well, Ivan nearly had his jumper pulled off as well. The Collingwood half-back flanker and left half-back. Half-forward it goes. Olsen again, a very busy player in the match to date. Over the head of Davis, Harms comes out from the pocket. Shaw's there with him and Olsen again in the play, but cuts the ball over the line, it'll be thrown back. Out of bounds about uh, 40 metres around from the Collingwood goal. Olsen doing a pretty good job for Collingwood. Knocked out by Fitzpatrick the second time. Grabbed by South, but he's caught it, he's dropped it. Finally comes out the harms. Uh, uh, McConville, I should say, was into the hands here of uh, Shaw. A pot shot for goal, it's too wide. Can Brewer mark it with Mackay? No, he really got it. Down it comes to France, he clears the ball away. Back there towards centre half back. There's a go from McClure now. He goes for a kick off the ground, very foolishly. Should have picked it up. A hand pass back to Moore. Another one back to Morris, but it's too long. Oh, bad play that time by Armstrong. Shaw knocks it out now to Weirmouth. And he's clear. He fires for the goal. Not a good kick, a chance for Brown. There'll be a free kick down the field here, I would say. And back, uh, back upfield uh, to Shaw. Ray Shaw. Was it, yeah, he was interfered with after he kicked the ball. Is that right as he had it? Well, pushing the back, Will. Pushing the back. Well, he's at centre half forward, a good 50 metres out from goal. I'll say this, Bob, that the Collingwood forward line looks a little bit more dangerous than Carlton's at the moment, doesn't it? Very much so, and I think uh, Carlton a little bit um, sort of ragged. They're giving away free kicks that they shouldn't be giving away. Well, there's a chance now for sure, a little sure, the Collingwood skipper, about 50 metres out. This would be a darn good goal if he could kick this one, because this would really lift the side. There we see a player dropping in short. He's found him. It's Andrew Ireland coming right down from that half-back line, and the Carlton defence... Well, the Carlton forward left him unguarded. Should have gone all the way down with him that time. And, uh, of course, he's only about 35 metres out from goal. There we see the free kick coming up there, sitting on his back. I would say it's a free kick to Shaw. And now Andrew Ireland from about 30 metres out. He's That's put it right through the middle. And Collingwood go to four goals, three, 27 points. 
the count six behinds only and we're at the 10 minute meter, uh, meter mark well island uh, mark. they're being allowed to uh, come right down the ground because of the change of the ruck rovers uh, keo and armstrong are making a change in defense and allowing island to to come right down and notice that uh, carlton have made a move uh, jezelinko has gone to the back pocket and harms to the center well it might add some bite to it because harms hasn't been in the play and away we go again more Sheldon over the head of Byrne, picked up by Francis McCartan. The Blues looking a very ragged combination at the moment as the Magpies still apply pressure. Oh, Fitzpatrick only biffed Edwards in the eye because of that play on call. They're all having trouble picking that one up. Picked up eventually by Shaw, but he got tripped for his trouble and the umpire says it's a free kick to the Collingwood skipper. Johnson grabbed him by the foot. That looked really sensible as Shaw goes for a short pass. Moore's on his own and Collingwood looking better. The further the match progresses. Peter Moore's at left half forward, a long way from goal, and a dry day would possibly get the distance, but this fellow isn't a bad kick when he gets onto it. Let's see what he can do this time. Peter Moore off target for a start, and uh, McConville down there takes the mark. He's got around the boundary line, looking for a pass, successful. Picked up down there uh, for the Blues by uh, Keo. Keo to centre wing. Marcuse on the ground too for Carlton, there he is, he's got the white shorts, you can't miss him, back to Keogh again. Let's see if Carlton can get some forward work or cohesion into their forward line, is that a mark to Harms? I think so. So already that move seems to be paying off and Austin coming on also. Let's see who's gone off for Carlton, it uh, looks like McConville. Ball up towards the 10 metre square, McClure couldn't take the mark. Byrne suckers it off the ground, out towards the halfback flank it goes, Ray Shaw and Harms. Harms cleverly, Morris is right there with him though. The Magpies defending desperately, down towards the full forward zone. That could have almost been kicking in danger. Umpire Bill Deller didn't pay a free kick though. Buckley snapshot out over the line. And Harms is going crook because he was on his own, but he didn't see him, I don't think. And it'll be a penalty free kick as we see it in replay. Yes. That's Wayne Harms is Mark. But back with the free kick to Stan Magro. A long kick from the Collingwood back pocket player, Fitzpatrick and Moore. Harms again. He's certainly reveling being on the ball because uh, he certainly added some bite to it there. Ireland's kick down towards the centre wing position. Southby couldn't take the mark, got into the back of his opponent seemingly. It's a Collingwood free kick and I agree. Play on, Banks drives the ball long in towards the pocket for the Magpies. Brewer's right there, keeps it in play. Davis, Davis fires at the goals, it's going close but just bounces offline. And through for only one point, and Olsen's going crook. That's right, Ed. Olsen was sitting in the goal square on his own. He missed him completely. Well, OK, there's the score. Collingwood, four goals, 4-28. A 22-point lead over Carlton, six points. And we're at the 12-minute mark of the second quarter of the 1979 Grand Final. Chance for Redwood. Blake Gallo, this fellow's marked brilliant today, considering the conditions, Bobby. Four marks. A surprisingly good mark, uh, Lou. Uh, very few people mark over Duel, and that's just what Edwards has done on a number of occasions. Well, he's about 55 metres out from goal. It's a long kick into the goals where players set themselves. It's pushed out a go for Barham, and a go here again for kick, but it was smothered. Francis goes after it. He can't pick it up, and the ball is out of bounds. And the Carlton supporters have another sigh of relief because that was mighty close that time. Mighty close indeed. They're all having a go, knocked out by Fitzpatrick as a chance now. Davis got one on the back, it finally comes out to Keogh, a hurried kick. Back there, Moore going after it. Can't pick it up, his feet got in the way that time and the ball is out of bounds. Still on Collingwood's half forward on about uh, 55 metres around from their goal. Right in front of the northern stand. It'll be Moore and Fitzpatrick. Umpires foul a free kick, it'll be against Moore for getting into his back. And he's played a very good game indeed for Carlton Fitzpatrick. Kicked oh. off the side of his boot, and that's more than I could say for his kicking. <laughs> and it's out of bounds. This time it's up to the centre wing position. And we see Collingwood four goals for 28. To uh, Carlton six points only. The ball back into play again. Fitzpatrick and Moore. Actually, uh, it's a free kick to Moore this time. And actually, Peter Moore's not playing a bad game today, considering he won the Brownlow medal on Monday night. They don't usually play well the week after, Bob. I think he's played a great game so far, Lou. And uh, you know, as I said beforehand, some of the players respond to it, and Moore appears to be one of those players that it makes no difference to. There's Sheldon driving it back there towards the wing position. Worthington coming out, got it well covered. A hand pass, it's out to no man's land, but in goes Shaw. He scoops it between his legs, Davis picks it up, spins out of the back nicely. A hand pass to Moore, and Moore drives it down towards that half-forward line. He 
puts the ball long up towards half forward, Banks and Southby, and once again it's going to be thrown back into play, and good news on the weather soon as you detected some patches of sunshine sneaking through the clouds. A little warm to the uh, spectators up who were drenched earlier in the day, Edwards, He's opposite number eight, Keo was right there with him. Southby tries to pick the ball up. He's got plenty of opposition from Kink. Duel likewise. Here's little Shaw gets pushed in the back, or did he have the ball? Dropping the ball, says the umpire. Maybe a little bit harsh. However, the men in white are always right. So they say. I didn't write that line. We'll watch the replay again as Wearmouth comes in to pick the ball up, but uh, now it's back with Fitzpatrick. Mike Fitzpatrick having a great duel with Peter Moore today in the ruck. Oh, there's a nice old heave if you don't mind. Thank you very much, Billy Pickens' free kick against Brown. No doubt about that. Carlton fans not happy about it. They haven't had too much to be happy about so far today, have they? Edwards flies high. Duel knocks the ball well clear. Good defensive tactics. Here's Olsen again. Tackles hard. Armstrong comes out of it, or in fact almost. I think it's holding the ball, and Russell Olsen will take the free kick. But gee, he's played well. My word, he's played. That was a magnificent tackle, Peter. Against his old side, he'd be very keen to do well. It wasn't such a good pass, but nevertheless, it's uh, still picked up by Peter Moore. Gets away from Fitzpatrick. Awesome again. Oh, got a beautiful biff right in the side of the face. Oh, he's out cold. It's the replay again, Peter, as uh, Olsen Ke takes it. Oh, and, uh, Keo oh, really hit him. Oh, if you don't mind. Well, you know, I... <laughs> can only assume that uh, Keo has said, well, I've got mine. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Well, Russell Olsen, one of Collingwood's prime movers at the moment, he's already kicked one goal yeah. and seems to be all over the field. We're seeing now, Pete, the value, I think, of the, the rule that says the closest player to it. And I think it's fair enough. If Olsen couldn't take his kick at the moment, it would be against Collingwood. That's right, so Moore takes it. And what a good kick it was. Mackay flew high. Mark the Brewer! <laughs> That's judgment for you, isn't it? Well, actually, uh, Big, uh, Big Mackay put them all off. He went up about a half an hour before acceptances. Now, this should be a goal, and it will put Collingwood further in front. Brewer has hit to score one today. He should alter that statistic very shortly. In he comes from 10 metres out, fires, goal! <laughs> Collingwood go further ahead with that goal to the former Melbourne player, and they're looking good for the grand final at the moment. 5-4, 34 to Carlton. No goal. Six behind, six points, and 17 minutes have gone in the second quarter. Well, Bobby, it's hard what... to say what Carlton could do at the moment. Uh, I'd be a little inclined, I think, to be trying to put Jezelenko on the forward line rather than defence, because uh, you, you get back into the game by winning. We're watching on the re uh, replay now. as you, You'll see Mackay come up well before acceptances, upset the whole pack, <laughs> and uh, Brewer, you know, waiting there for it to come through. Southby possibly should have been a little bit more desperate. 17 minutes gone and Collingwood in front by 28 points. There we see the ball kicked away by Shaw. A chance for Barham. He goes down. And, uh, Young's there too and the umpire's found a free kick. It'll go to Young. He's off like a shot. Boots the ball looking there for Francis and he's got the mark. He plays on. Getting away from Anderson. A hand pass back to Harms and he's clear. A running shot for goal. Not a bad sort of a kick either. One point they... By golly, they still can't get their first goal, and we've played 18 minutes into the second quarter of the 1979 Grand Final. Certainly been a dismal day for their forwards. They've had uh, seven shots and no goals. Rene Kink uh, trying to get out. Buckley's clear. He goes down. He tries to get out. A hand pass to Fitzpatrick. Carlton's best player drops short, but Cormac in front. And a good mark. They've got McClure playing at full forward now. They've made many moves. Harms in the centre, Jezelenko down to the back pocket. They're moving him like a draft ball at the moment. The ball goes back out there. Fitzpatrick flies, couldn't hold the mark. But the umpire's paying a free kick. Don't ask me what for. On the shoulder. Ball kicked across towards the full forward zone. McClure flying. Punched away again. Chance now for Sheldon to pick it up. Keogh's there. Hand pass coming out to Harms. A goal coming up this time. Their first at the 19-minute mark of the second quarter, Lou. That's right, the uh, first goal coming at the 19-minute mark of that uh, first. There it is again, Harms, who's made the difference to Carlton going in the centre. 
That should lift the side a little bit at least. Well, I think Harms himself has uh, already been responsible for a lift in the Carlton play, and uh, this has been the value of a player like Wayne Harms. He just doesn't know uh, how to give in, and he keeps at it all the time. He missed the one just previously. He came back again there and finished it off, and it'll be interesting to see. I think it should give the whole Carlton side a lift. OK, 5-4, 34, Collingwood to Carlton. One goal, 7-13. And at one goal, seven, uh, that's right, 13, back to the centre again. It'll be Peter Moore. In the ruck against Fitzpatrick. Neither got control. There's Buckley trying to get out the pack. He finally got it out. Going after it is Young and Ricky Barham. Barham suckers it off the ground, plays it safe out towards that wing position. It's on the boundary line and it's out of bounds out there on that centre wing position on the outer side of the ground. They wait for the boundary throw-in and the sunshine persisting. That's good news, so the standard of play may improve even more. But even with the wet conditions, both sides putting on a superb exhibition of hard, tough and vigorous football, especially that first quarter. That was a real ring-a-ding-ding job, as Lou would say. It's Patrick and Moore. Free kick again by G's Pangsum. Tiggy Touchwood frees in the ruck. Whereas uh, some umpires let it go, they're not letting it go today. Let's kick up towards half forward. Edwards almost took another beauty. Armstrong scouting well, but he gets collared for his trouble, and right on the point of the square, it's going to be a ball up at the 21-minute mark of the second quarter. First quarter went about 28 and a half minutes. Moore and Fitzpatrick again, picked up by Kink. To Ray Shaw, the Collingwood skipper fires, a long kick at the goals, Jezzelenko backing back, oh, spilt the mark, Jezza, what are you doing? Dear, oh dear, a chance for the Magpies down there, but they've collared the whole lot of them, and umpire Kevin Smith will ball it up about 12 metres out directly in front of goal. I'll tell you what, you don't often see Jezzelenko miss a chest mark like that, Fitzpatrick. Down to Olsen, who's recovered, Brown almost marked it in the square, Duel's there, and it's handballed through by, uh, I think it was Duel, and it's one point, so that was desperation for you. Bruce Duell taking, uh, well, not the easy way out, but the safe way out. 21 minutes gone, and the score in the 75 grand final is Jesselenko prepares to kick out. It's 5 5 35 to 1 7 13. I guess Jess has played in just about every position. The century goal kicker at full forward, and now kicking out from full back. The kick dropping short. That was uh, Southby, the man who generally does the job. Fitzpatrick trying to pick it up for Carlton. For Collingwood is. Uh, that's Banks, little Banks. He's gone for a hand pass. Desperation by Fitzpatrick. Firing at the goals is uh, Ricky Barham, but what's he done? It's out of bounds. And it'll be a penalty free kick to the Blues to be taken for them. Let's see, it looks like Rod Austin. Pete Mackay has gone to centre half forward in an effort to lift them up there. And Brown down at the back pocket. Well, Brown had little success at full forward as Rod Austin comes out with the free kick. Fitzpatrick setting himself for the mark. Edwards over the top, almost took the grab again. He's played it. He's taken some great marks today, I would think round about five at the moment, that is the case. Five marks to Alan Edwards, a superb aerial display at centre-half forward. And with his kick, Jesselenko out from the goals and takes the mark. So the old fellow setting an example now in the last line of defence. Jezza from centre-half back. Centre wing position, he's looking out there for Klomp, it's punch clear. Down towards Anderson, the goal sneak. In he comes, a long kick from Graham Anderson up towards the goals. It's just drifting offline, though, and goes through for one point to the Collingwood total to take the Magpies to five goals, six, 36 points, and they still lead Carlton, 1-7-13. So it's a difference of 23 points, and we've played uh, 23 and a half minutes of this uh, second quarter of the 1979 Grand Final. Carlton have made a 1,000 moves to try and get themselves back in the game, and the one that could save them is Harms in the centre. Moore and Fitzpatrick again. Neither can take the mark. It's Armstrong scouting around. He's in a bit of trouble, but he's clear now. Goes for a short pass. Looking there for Klump. It's not a good one. Banks to Ireland tried to pick that up. It finally came out to Buckley. He drives the ball over the centre half forward position. Worthington goes for the punch. There's Magro trying to get it out. Still can't get it out. They're all having a bit of a go now. Finally, it's uh, Byrne coming away from that half back line. He decides to go for a bit of a run. He better do something with it. Oh, smothered that time from uh, uh, Worthington. A bad bit of play. Johnson gets it out to McClure. A goal coming up, but he's off target. And he's put it out of bounds. Magnificent football by Wayne Johnson there, uh, Lou. Uh, Worthington had uh, quite a bit of time, and Johnson showed tremendous courage to throw himself on the boot. Ball out of bounds, right against the point post. Moore getting up high. Buckley smothers the ball. He tries to come out of the pack. He's grabbed. He's collared too high. 
It'll be a free kick and a chance for Carlton's second goal to come at the 24-minute mark of this uh, second quarter. And Buckley yet to score a goal. Carlton looking a lot better since they put uh, Harms in the centre. Of course, uh, they've made a lot of other moves, and uh, at halftime, Bobby Skilton, the triple Brandlow medalist, will tell us about that. Well, one player sadly had a form, Lou, and you mentioned him was McClure. Waiting now for uh, Buckley. Only about uh, 15 metres out from goal. Telling Ricky Barham, or telling the umpire for Ricky Barham to get out the way, he fires. And there's no doubt about that one, it's right through the middle. So it's Carlton going to uh, two goals, 7.19, to Collingwood, five goals, 6.36, and we're at the 25-minute mark of this second quarter, and I would say this would be about a 28 or 29-minute quarter. Lou, uh, the player that hasn't had a great uh, deal of kicks, but I think has made a difference uh, also down on that forward line, Mark Koo has tapped a, a couple yes. on, knocked the ball through a pack, and made openings for other players to come into the play. So uh, both Johnson and Mark Koo doing their little bit. Time on being played in the second quarter now as the clock ticks over to the 25-minute mark. And as Lou suggested, possibly about three to three and a half minutes of uh, play left. We'll see as we await the bounce again. Moore to Johnston, right into that blue pot. Going through as Southby, Armstrong. He goes towards half forward. There's almost a mark to Sheldon. I think he's got it. Yep. Sheldon in front of Macro. Carlton looking a lot better now in the latter stages of the quarter. Sheldon's kick in turn towards the goals. Was that touched? Was it touched? I don't think so. It's a goal, I'd say. It is. It rolled through and just made it, didn't it? So Carlton right back into this match. That's what the Blues needed. So let's check the scores. It's Collingwood, five goals, six, 36 points, and Carlton, 3-7-25. Here it is on replay. The mark taken by Ken Sheldon, who's been a fairly quiet player so far in the match. And look at the kick. McClure and um, fullback McCormick both jostling each other. Harms coming down there to try and get the foot to the ball, but it was already through for goal. Ball driven away by Southby. Back here coming through as Byrne, showing plenty of dash. And Collingwood sweep into attack now. Over the uh, head of Jezelenko. Out comes the Brew. He's in plenty of trouble. He's collared. Picked up by Duel. The umpire called play on. He goes for a short pass. Here's Francis on his own. He's got a paddock to run in. He boots the ball short. It's a good pass too. And a mark here to Johnson. Carlton looking a lot better as they swing into attack again. Up there towards McClure. Can he mark it? Pushed out by McCormack. Buckley gets it out again. Mark Koo looking a danger. He's grabbed by Magro. He goes down. They go down. Buckley trying to get it. He's collared. And the umpire says dropping the ball. But golly, didn't have much of a chance then. I'll tell you that now. In the middle of that uh, big heap of mud. Burr to take the free kick. Collingwood in front by 11 points. Drives it out wide. There's a... Uh, a kick, he couldn't take the mark, he kicks it off the ground. Coming out to meet the ball is Duell. He's grabbed it the first grab, his kick is smothered, it comes back here now. Towards uh, Anderson, he got a bit of a run on uh, McLewick. He's grabbed, he can't get it out. And it's finally uh, Olsen coming out of the pack with the ball. Not a very good kick, Byrne dives on it, and so does Johnson. He's the first to recover, he's out now. His kick is off the side of his boot, Ireland goes for the punch. Back it comes to Morris, he goes down. Fitzpatrick gets it out, but there's a free kick to Morris for one on the back. Collingwood badly need a goal at this, uh, for the end of this quarter. 28 minutes gone. The ball booted over the centre uh, position. They're all looking for free kicks. They shouldn't be worrying about that. There's Banks. He's putting himself right in the middle of the pack. And umpire Della decides to ball it up right on the edge of the square up towards Collingwood centre half forward position. Fitzpatrick and Moore. Knocked out by Fitzpatrick. Uh, fumble that time by uh, Armstrong. Gets, still gets his kick back. A chance now for Anderson. He's got the run here on Keo. He's only got to pick it up, but he goes down. Keo grabs him. He finally kicks it off the ground. Beautiful play. Over to Olsen, a short pass. It's too long. It'll be out of bounds. And a penalty free kick to go to Austin down there, a little short of half back. They're certainly looking a lot better towards the end of this quarter, Carl. They're only trailing by 11 points. And we're approaching the 29-minute mark, nearly the end of the quarter. Chance for Moore to mark, he's not playing that as we see Morris coming out of the pack. A hand pass to Shaw, he's in trouble as he boots the ball back there, but once again it's Carlton in the way. And a good mark taken there by Klopp. He quickly plays on with a short pass. Looks out it's there. okay, and a mark to Armstrong and he's off. He goes for another short pass, out wide, and there's Fitzpatrick on his own. And Carlton away now, he better kick it, he gets his kick up there towards the full forward zone. McClure's got the mark, it'll be a goal. 
this count. So it's Collingwood, five goals, six, 36 points to Carlton. Four goals, seven, 31, only uh, five points the difference. And Carlton were behind by 28 minutes midway through the quarter as we watch that again. Plump across to Armstrong. Armstrong seeing Fitzpatrick all on his own in the centre and Fitzpatrick taking just a little bit too long to get his kick. Almost got caught over the head of McCormick and McClure then realising that it was better off running onto the open goal and uh, Carlton now have kicked three goals in four, just over four minutes. And they've kicked four goals straight too, I think, looking at the scoreboard. Back into the centre, the siren imminent for half-time. Fitzpatrick and Moore, it's knocked down to Olsen again. Half-forward, Renee King should take the mark. A long way from goal. Kink would want to get the ball moving pretty quickly, I'd suggest, because I don't think he'll make the distance from there. Although he's uh, seemingly pretty confident about the kick, he's gone back and will line it up deliberately. Oh, a shocking kick from Kink. Didn't travel more than about 45 metres. Duel in the pack there. It comes out towards... Uh, it's little Sheldon. He fires the ball up towards the halfback flank now for the Blues. In comes uh, Klomp. Hot on his opponent, Anderson. It's tunnel ball. A hand pass from him out towards Johnson. Johnson picks it up on the run beautifully in front of Rayburn. A long kick by him up towards McClure again. McCormick's there with him. McClure, soccer tactics from him. Up towards Buckley. He'll pick it up with him. He'll kick it. Yes, he has. Carlton in front. Oh. What a second quarter. His second goal, Jimmy Buckley. The first from a free kick. Let's watch it on replay. Jimmy Buckley, 15 metres out. Well, Buckley having a little bit of trouble there, picking the ball up originally, and they're the ones that are really hard on days like this. So there's no more pressure, Lou, than, than a goal like that set. But full credit to Klomp. Klomp really started that off when he uh, came in behind Anderson, who tried to get it back to Kink, and it was Klomp who got it back. 31 minutes gone of the second quarter. Knocked out by Fitzpatrick, just about the best player on the ground. Moore comes out with it. A hand pass to Morris, coming back to his right boot, then he kicks it with his left boot. Finally over the centre half forward position, they're all going up. Mark to do. Carlton have been inspired at the moment. The ball out to Francis and Carlton looking the better side by a mile. They're running over top of Collingwood as the ball is dropped short by Francis. And there's Johnson, he's been a danger to this quarter. And they're running all over the place there forwards. Up there towards Mark McClure again. He's nearly got the mark. Umpire called play on. It'll be a ball up. About 30 metres out from the Carlton goal. 32 minutes gone and Carlton are in front by one point after being 28 points down about uh, 10 minutes into this quarter. Knocked out that time by the big fella Moore. Going after it is Wayne Harms. He goes down. Sheldon can't pick it up, but he finally gets it out to Young. And there's the siren for the end of the quarter. Out of half time in the 1979 grand final between Carlton and Collingwood. Carlton in front by one point. Carlton five goals, seven, 37. To Collingwood, five goals, 6.36. Second half of the 1979 VFL Grand Final, the difference one point. Carlton leading by that margin as we go into the second half of the game. Weirmouth actually got the tap out from the ruck then after that uh, bounce went skew if. Francis to duel, well smothered by Banks. And another chance for Banks as they all dive on top of the ball. Austin's there for the Blues. Duel tries to get it out successfully to Francis. And you can pick Carlson up. He's the man with the cleanest Guernsey on the field. Sheldon and Magro. And Magro cutting the ball cleverly for a back man over the boundary line. And we'll see yet another boundary throw in. Still the sunshine persisting here at the MCG. And conditions rather pleasant now, although the ground, of course, still very, very heavy. Umpire says on the back of the neck, a free kick to Carlton. And uh, Collingwood fans aren't too happy about that. As Sheldon boots the ball up towards the full forward zone. Twisted well clear. Down towards Buckley again, picked up by Keogh, who snaps it forward. McClure is in front. It's knocked away from him once more. There's Marku trying to get through the pack successfully too. He snaps it goals. It's off target though. Touched by Sheldon right on the line. Or was it over? It's going to be a boundary throw in to take place only a couple of metres around from the behind post in the Carlton attacking zone. Jones over the top McClure, picking. He got grabbed that he had the ball. The umpire said it was held to him, and so it's going to be a ball up to take place. About 15 metres out from goal, and Carlton still in attack. A very crowded forward line it is too. There must be about 20 players around the ball at the moment. Jones contesting the ruck work with Moore. 
and over the top was Worthington knocking it clear and the score is through for one point so that increases Carlton's lead to two points as we check the scores it's Collingwood five goals 636 and Carlton 5838 two points the difference we wait now for Worthington to kick the ball back into play it's a long kick out there towards that half back line they're flying Moore got his hands but picked up by Jones he loses it Keogh's there he goes down out oh, does that is Carlson it finally comes out to Armstrong this looks pretty dangerous Picks it up pretty well, too. Goes for a pass. Looking there for Harms. And a good mark taken there by Morris. They're on each other now. Uh, Jezelenko shifted himself away from Morris. Wasn't doing so well. And, uh, of course, we know the, the ability of Harms. Out there towards Edwards. Punched away by Duell. Over to Klopp. Who's had Rene Kinkwell covered. Chance for more to mark. They all fly. There's a good mark to McClure. A good mark. Already kicked one goal. He was the father that put the kick. There's the mark again. What's that? That's a beautiful mark. A very confident one. I didn't give him a chance in running, Lou. <laughs> no, neither did I. I thought he was right out of the picture, but he got it. And now he's only about uh, 25 metres to 30 metres out from goal on a very slight angle. He fires at the goals. And it's not a bad sort of a kick either. And the Blues are eight points in front at the two-minute mark of this uh, third quarter of the 1979 grand final as we said before at half time the third quarter always a vital one and to get that goal within a matter of two or three minutes after the start of the quarter lifts the entire side i think bobby skilt will agree with that very much so uh, lou and there isn't anything like picking up that first goal after after half time it just seemed to jump higher run faster if you're lucky enough to get it i just felt about 10 minutes before the end of the second quarter carton were looking the stronger side as they go for morris he has a fresh air shot a ball up here i would say that was a free kick to collingwood it'll go to morris a veteran of uh, I think th th three or four grand finals for real, three grand finals for richmond back there towards center half forward and klopp he's certainly not leaving renee kink's side when I kink got off to a great start, but was reported in the first 10 minutes of the play. And it hasn't been playing so well since Klopp picking it up, running into a bit of trouble there. But knocked it out very intelligently that time towards Francis. Out it goes towards Harms. He overruns the ball. Out there is uh, Davis going after. Down he goes in the mud. And there's a bit of a stack up here. The umpires foul a free kick. It'll go to Davis. Well down out there on that wing position. Boots the ball over centre half forward. Up gets Edwards and Lily Mark that uh, fumble there by Barham. And the umpires found a free kick. It'll go to Young. And Young short of the centre half uh, back position. At the moment, Carlton in front by eight points. 6 8 44 to Collingwood 5 6 36. Round towards Wayne Harms who takes the mark right in the mud patch. And away go the Blues again. This is starting to look like a repetition of 1970 all over except it's happened earlier. A free kick there being paid, is it? McClure claiming one. What's going to happen? Billy Pickens. And the Carlton fans not too happy with that as Pickin takes the free kick. Ball dropping short in towards centre field. Wearmouth in there for the Magpie side, but umpire Kevin Smith not but paying a free kick. I don't know about you, Pete, but Carlton are looking a lot uh, more confident to me than Car uh, Collingwood. Well, the move that really set them on light, Lou, is putting Harms out of the back pocket onto the ball. Morris, a short kick by Kevin Morris. Carlson's there. Likewise, Francis, the ball into the muddy centre again. Carlson diving on top of it. Can't pick it up. The umpire said it's a free kick to Lee Carlson for a push in the back. I said in the call, he dived on top of it. It didn't seem to me to be a push as he goes for the long kick up towards half forward. Knocked away by Austin. He follows the player pretty well too. He'll get his kick in too, Rod Austin. Now towards the centre wing position. No mark paid there to burn. He's almost on all fours. Johnston's there likewise. A push in the back, says umpire Kevin Smith. And the recipient of the free kick will be former Carlton player Ray Byrne. Byrne at centre wing. Collingwood badly needing a goal to get back their composure, which they lost in the latter half of the second quarter. Into the hands there of uh, Davis. The Collingwood full forward, fires at the goals. It'll land adjacent to the 10-metre square. Jesselenko got a hand to it, clumps there. Chance for Collingwood, a snapshot for goal by Shaw is off target and through for only one point. So let's check the scores. Carlton still in front. Five goals, seven, 37, Collingwood to 6 8, 44, Carlton. Peter, some of the moves that uh, Collingwood have made, probably the most interesting is Anderson as a ruck rover, Carlson to the wing, Pickin, as we said, to full back, McCormick to centre half back. They're the main moves. Moore and Jones. And Peter Jones hasn't been really conspicuous today. I thought that in the wet conditions, Jones should have been amongst Carlton's best players. Maybe the ankle is still bothering him, we don't know. 
Moore flying high, but he got into James's back that time, and Old Purse will get the free kick. I wonder if it's going to be his last game of football. Jones from left half back decides to go for a run, doesn't kick the ball that long towards the centre wing position. In fact, it wasn't a good kick at all from Jones over the line and a throw in to take place in the middle of the interchange area. Well, at least the Collingwood player didn't get it. I think he played it a bit safe that time. He couldn't find a Carlton player to give it to. Moore and Jones again, knocked out by Moore, a beauty over there to burn. And it's down towards Collingwood's half forward line. Right on the line, South be picking it up there. He's grabbed, he's trying to get out. There will be a ball up here, I'd say, for sure. It's about 65 to 70 metres around from the Collingwood goal, and they're finding it hard to score at the moment. They've definitely they've... lost a bit of that momentum they have. Well, that's move. right, Bob, and their forward line looked very good, uh, particularly in the first quarter and a half. They were leading by 28 points. Anderson's kick is smothered, actually comes back there to Austin. Austin's away, he's grabbed. Umpire's giving a bit of latitude as we see Southby oh. play it safe and go for the boundary line. Did he what, Luke? That's experience, and that's a pretty experienced defence down there too with Southby. Austin and Duell, and of course Klopp doing pretty well. There's Edwards at the back. Back to Ronnie Weirmouth, who's been pretty quiet today. Not a very long kick at all. The umpire calling play on. Morris hurries up to tries a mark. Got one in the head that time too. It'd be a mark there to Davis. Is it Davis? Got a kick in the head, but it was an accident. They still hurt. Yeah, accident. It doesn't really matter. He's kicked one goal. He's only about... Uh, here it is again. You watch this. Morris kicks it over to him. Down he goes. A bit of an accident that time. Yep. It can't be helped. But we see uh, a chance here now for Davis to score a goal and make the difference only one point. He's already kicked one goal. And this is a very important one to Colling with the ex-Carlton player, ex-North Melbourne, fires. And it's a goal. So it's a point the difference at the eight-minute mark of the third quarter in the 1979 grand final between Carlton and Collingwood. Well, Craig Davis, uh, and that is the, the real value of that player. He doesn't miss many goals, uh, except for the uh, second, or was it the qualifying final against North Melbourne when he kicked North 7 or 1 7, whatever it, uh, for memory, whatever it might have been. But normally a good kick of the ball, and that one was uh, certainly no exception. But uh, it uh, was a badly needed goal for Collingwood because it had been a while since they uh, had gone forward and uh, looked like uh, scoring. and. They really had, as I mentioned earlier, lost that the momentum that they were going on with. And the Carlton half back line, Clomp, Duell, and Southby had made a big difference here, really tightening up. Edwards uh, going out of the game against Duell, Kink right out of the game against Clomp, and Southby, well, the normal reliable Jeff Southby, not getting many kicks himself, but making sure that Banks doesn't. A new ball. The other one did come back. It's behind the goalpost at the uh, scoreboard end, actually, as that one's tapped down to Keogh. Yeah, well, they're able to kick this long, and Mackay takes a beautiful mark at centre-half forward in front of McCormack. Well, that just shows you a bit of luck. They put a new ball there. It wasn't even uh, wet at all, and that gave him a chance to mark that, and Bobby. And nearly kicked this too, Lou. That's right. He's a beautiful kick, David Mackay, 50 metres out, directly in front. Look at that for a kick. Mackay kicking it long. It got the distance, but not the accuracy required, and it's through for only one point to the Blues. So the game's still pretty well all tied up with the... Difference now being two points, 43 to 45. Carlton is still in the lead. I think that would be the scoring, and the breeze seems to be blowing down towards that end too, Bob. Whatever breeze it is, uh, favourite, is definitely blowing that way, but you can always score at both ends on the MCG. Worthington, Sheldon, not paid the mark. Yes, he has paid it, umpire Bill Della. I thought it was worthy of the effort. And Kenny Sheldon to take the mark and free kick. Call it what you like. He's going to take the kick from there anyway. He's already kicked one goal a little bit further out than David Mackay, so it would need to be a very, very good kick to, in fact, make the distance. Ken Sheldon, Carlton Rover, 50 metres out from goal. Not a good kick from Sheldon, dropping short into the square. Jones, has he got it? <laughs> Old Purse. Well, there's no doubt about Percy Jones. He's a marvel. He's been one of the greatest uh, players for Carlton. He's an inspiration. By golly, he lifts the side, doesn't he? If he kicks this goal, they go mad. They pull the house down. Lou, I reckon there are people that would come just to see Purse. Jones. If he misses, they'll still pull the house down too. <laughs> 15 metres out. Comes in and fires up the goal. No doubt about it. Purse, you put it through. So Carlton lead by eight points in the 79 grand final. Let's check the scores. It's Carlton, 7-9-51, Collingwood, 6-7-43. Well, that's the sort of goal, Bobby, that lifts the player, lifts the entire side, and the goodness, we said before, his last game, 
and I, I, you know he's just a great personality we we'll watch it on replay now Lou as uh, Jones gets the front position uh, you see the, the look of joy as he's able to hug that ball <laughs> in and I'm sure uh, Perth may have been hobbling a bit with that uh, ankle but I'm, it doesn't feel anywhere near as bad right now he played that mark very intelligently too he knocked it in front of him so he wouldn't lose then he grabbed it on the chest up it goes Jones and Moore Axley Moore got it down, Morris tries to get clear, he was grabbed, he got a free kick and he'll take the free kick at centre field. Collingwood badly need another goal now. Over centre half four, they want Rene Kink to come to life. Klopp's got him well covered, it's finally cleared away by Southby. Punched away by Ireland, back towards Morris, who's doing pretty well in the centre again. The kick over the centre half forward position, Dill drops the centre, Edwards pounces on it, Klopp trying to get it out, he's playing strong football, this guy, and the ball back towards the centre of the ground. Collingwood struggling at the moment as Mackay overruns the ball. Magro's trying to get it out, picked up by Byrne, over to Moore, and Moore's away, he gets away from Buckley, a left footer up there towards the full forward zone. But then goes Jezelenko, who spoiled his own man, uh, Austin, that time. Finally, the ball comes out now, when we see Ken trying to get it, but it's going to be a pile up there and the umpire will ball it up. I thought Jezzelinko made a, a bad error there, Lou. Uh, he was the player who should have been able to see his teammate and uh, should have been there just shepherding and to allow his teammate to take the mark. Twelve minutes gone of the third quarter and eight points the difference in favour of Carlton as the ball comes out there to France as a hand pass back to Austin. Austin boots it long towards the wing position, punched out by Byrne. Three Collingwood players there, a oh, bad hand pass. That time by Wearmouth, a wild one, knocked away by Klopp. There's a chance now for the ball to be driven up by Carlton over their half forward line. And a mark taken here by Worthington at centre half back. Players, not many players down there on the full forward position for Carlton. Not a soul down there at the moment. A long kick by Worthington. It is a long kick. And Dill goes for the punch. It's successful. Back to Keo. He's grabbed. He threw it away. It's finally pushed away by Sheldon over towards Ireland. He's clear as he breaks away and boots the ball down towards that half forward line. It falls short. Punched away beautifully by Fitzpatrick. Morris overran the ball. Carlson comes in. He takes a wide turn. He's away. He fires towards the goals. Up there towards Davis. Look at the mark. What a beautiful mark. What a beautiful mark by Davis. This will make it two points. Of I he's got it through, he kicked it through that quickly. Well, I was that wrapped in the mark. Put it right through, no doubt about it. Two well, points of difference. He, he didn't wait at all, as we watch now on the replay. Carlson putting it down, and as Lou called, a great mark by Davis. You'll see now he realises that he's got the opportunity, straight away swings around, where he only had to put the ball... Oh, I reckon he took a chance there, by my Straight <laughs> over the line, but uh, there it is. So, Colin... Uh, Two points of difference, 51 to 49. And we hope you're enjoying our telecast through HSV in Melbourne and associated stations throughout Australia. A magnificent game of football and the crowd really on its toes now, finding Boyce Armstrong from centre field down towards half four. There's a great mark to McCormack. He's playing at centre half back at the moment. Magro giving him some words of encouragement too as he runs past. McCormack's kick dropping a little bit short out towards half forward. Morris appealing for a free kick, and I think he can get it. Barham, Barham, sorry. Ricky Barham, who did some beautiful pickups in the first part of the game when the ball was a little bit more slippery. In he comes, Ricky Barham favours the torpedo punt kick and ticks, uh, kicks the ball long. Brewer up there, so too is uh, his Carlton opponent. There's no mark paid there, and it should be able to be cleared by uh, Marku. The duel, and the flying doormat over towards Klomp. That was good football. Back to Alex Marku. And away he goes, this little speedster. Marku's kick up towards half forward. Two Carlton players nearly messed it up, but it comes to Keo from Johnston. Mackay. Picked up by McCormack. A little bit slow to get rid of it when tackled. Here's Wayne Harms. Carlton Superman. Booted away by Billy Pickin, but not a long kick. And the ball fisted further forward, down towards the wing position that comes. It's a race for it here, and picked up by Armstrong. He goes for a hand pass. Plump. Wearmouth almost tackled him, tripped him up actually, he'll get a free kick, so he stopped him, but play on now to Marku, tackled by Morrison, well done, oh, Klopp's gone, still no free kick, yes, he's played at the ball, and Carlton fans not happy, listen to the crowd, seemed to be a good tackle though as Moore drives the ball long, looking for Kink and he's found him I think, yes, second bite, Rene King takes it in front of Robert Klump, and he'll go for the long kick, the incredible Hulk as he's known. Not really a long one as it's fisted clear. Down to Carlson, Duell. Jesselenko. Morris tackles well. Jesselenko in again. Barham caught. 
Still the umpire called play on. Anderson, Anderson has a snapshot for goal. It's off target. And it goes through. For, no, it's out of bounds. And so it'll be, it'll be thrown back into play in the forward pocket a couple of metres from the behind post. Well, Axwich right against the point post. Coming off the ground now is Jones, and we'll see Fitzpatrick going on the ground. Back it comes to Wearmouth. He's down. He's collared that time. Picked up by Jezelenko. He's collared. They're grabbing. It's very hard for players to get away. And down goes Young. He's had a push in the back. Sure going quick at the umpire, but it's too late. The decision's made. Ball kicked across there towards centre-half forward. Klomp coming in. Rene Kink got in the way there and interfered. He's had a, uh, a dirty day against Klopp because Klopp was uh, really trailing in the first 10 minutes behind uh, behind Klopp, but uh, he's well on top now. A 15-metre penalty against uh, Rene Kink. Rene. Well, he shouldn't have done that. It's his own fault. Penalised his own side. Klopp's got a chance to land this well up there towards the full forward zone. Over centre-half forward. Ball pushed away by Pick, and there's Francis on his own. He's got a chance to do something here as he's grabbed. The hand pass coming back to Johnson. They're grabbing him left and right at the moment. Pickin trying to get clear. He's down, and the umpire set a push in the back. Push in the back there to Billy Pickett. But Gilly, he can pick up a free kicker too, this guy. One on two. Over it goes to Worth. There's a long kick out there looking for Rene Kink, but Klopp's got him there. He can't get away. Kink trying to get it out now. He's caught a good hand pass. Coming out there to Andrew Ireland. A long kick down there towards that uh, forward pocket, but a good mark. He's dropped the mark, Austin. Umpire's called player, but it's interference. I think he'll get the free kick. 17 minutes gone. And there's only two points the difference in favour of Carl. 51 plays, 49. Fitzpatrick knocked out now. Finally driven up by Shaw, up towards the full forward zone. A chance now for Brown to mark. He does. He's been switched down there to full back from full forward. And that was done in the second quarter. Desilenko had to change his entire side round because they were trailing by 28 points at one stage. What's the difference? It's a, a 15-metre penalty, I think. It'll go back. That's right, Lou. Actually, he did penalise Carlton, I felt, Lou. Well, they had a I, chance, I yes. Uh, Harms would have taken the mark for sure. Carlton, 7-9-51 to Collingwood, 7-7-49. Seven, seven, We're at the 18-minute mark of the third quarter of the 1979 grand final between Collingwood and Carlton. Coming to you live through Channel 7. South Beast grab, gets it away again. Over to Armstrong, scouting well. Down to set a half forward it goes. Punched away now. He went for the mark, Magro. Down goes Johnson. Byrne comes in, kicks it off the ground. Umpire called play on it. Could have been kicking in danger. There's little Buckley trying to get out. He's grabbed, but he finally gets it over to Johnson. Having trouble picking it up. It's on the boundary line. Johnson can't get it out, and it's out of bounds. It's out of bounds about uh, 45 metres around from the uh, Carlton goal. And the throwing to take place, and David Mackay will contest with Peter Moore. A line ball, that one. Carlton small men there through Keogh. Oh, almost threw it out to his teammate in uh, Armstrong it was. Armstrong. It's a free kick, says umpire Bill Della. And let's see who's going to take this. Think it'll Kevin be Worthington. Might be Byrne, I think. Byrne's got it. <laughs> Byrne at right half back. Ray Byrne, former Carlton player. Drives the Magpies to their centre wing position. The Carlton small men through harms those shark it away. He's come into the game since moved out from the back pocket. Sheldon flies high, can't take the mark. Worthington limping. I was just going to say that, Pete. You took the words right <laughs> out of my mouth. He's uh, really hobbling at the and moment. He was on the doubtful list earlier in the week, so that's not good news for Collingwood as we await the throw in again. Peter Moore and Mackay. Mackay got that one out the back. Ireland is there for Collingwood. Morris likewise. Morris's kick, not a long one, picked up by Mackay. They're falling all over the place. The surface of the MCG slippery. Moore into the back of his opponent, Buckley, and I would suggest Buckley will get the free kick in the crowd. Carlton supporters anyway are happy with that. Peter Buckley at left half forward. Jimmy Buckley. In he comes for the kick. Just wide of the 10-metre square. McClure's there for Carlton. Picking for Collingwood. Here's a go. Johnson suckers it off the ground, but it's touched through by Lee Carlson for one point to the Blues. 20 minutes have gone in the third quarter and the score in the 79 grand final. Collingwood 7-7-49, trailing Carlton 7-10-52. The difference three points as we await the kick out from Worthington. Let's see how he goes with this one. Pretty gingerly, but a good deal of distance in the kick. Moore and Southby. Southby first to recover. Clomp. Picks up well, shoots out the hand pass to Harms. He'll line up the goals, but it's well smothered by Stan Magro. Beautiful football from the Magpie back pocket player. And it'll be a boundary throw, and now to take place on the halfback flank. That was beautifully done from Magro, and those things do take a lot of courage. Derek Shaw back on the field, too, in the ruck. Marku 
Maku for Carlton, over to teammate Francis, gets through Morris and also Carlson and fires at the goals. That's going pretty close! That's a goal! What a kick! Well, that's just about goal of the day, isn't it? I'd reckon I'd like to see that in replay. We'll have a look at it now, Peter, as uh, we see the uh, result of the kick. Not actually the pressure that was put on Harms, and uh, every Collingwood player in the vicinity ran straight at Harms after he received that hand pass from Marku, not Harms, uh, Francis. And uh, Francis, steady as can be, he's been a great player from the, right from the start of the, f the first quarter, and uh, that goal in a grand final, an absolutely magnificent goal. Carlton, eight goals, 10.58 to Collingwood, 7.749. And I tell you, he's played a very good game for Carlton Klopp. There's Wearmouth driving it back there. A chance for Rene Kink. He's got his hand on a good mark. He got away from Klopp that time. Quick hand pass over to Wearmouth. He's away. Drives the ball up there towards Moore in the position. 10 South. He parts it away. Packing up well as Jesley going to force it through for a point. He does that. That was sensible play. 7 8. 50 points. Calling with their trailing by 8 points to Carlton. 8 goals. 9. Uh, 58 points, and we're at the 22-minute mark of the third quarter. Banks was the player who went off, uh, Lou, and Peter Moore's gone to the uh, full forward position or forward pocket, whatever you like to term it, with um, Derek Shaw going into the ruck. Free kick to Edwards. He got one with the back of the neck that time, and he'll take that free kick about 60 metres out from goal. And the Magpies badly needing one at the moment. Trailing by eight points. Into the goal square. Moore taps it down. Jezelenko's there, gets it out wide, goes for the boundary line, that's playing it safe. Oh, that was bad play on the part of Davis. There's a chance for Marku to get clear. He should let it go, doesn't want to put it back into play for. Punched away again by, uh, by Ireland. There's up, but we see Dill trying to get out. Barn goes after it. It's very spongy out there. It's Mackay getting it out to Young. And Carlton are in action again. They get it away. Over to Armstrong. A very handy player indeed. A long hand pass to Sheldon as he taps the ball over to Johnson. Johnson's only got to pick it up and get around. He's opponent. He's looking there, but Burns in the way. Johnson going after it again. But there's Magro going through like a little tank that time, and the ball is forced out of bounds. That was bad play on the part of uh, Davis down there, Bob. I don't think he realised that with well, the Carlton players were behind him, Lou. He, uh, you know, being on the forward line, he probably was prepared to take the risk. There's Sheldon trying to get out, but the umpire called play. Look at those players piling on top of the ball, right in front of the Carlton goal. You can see it there on the screen in the background, not very far out at all. And the pressure now put on the Collingwood defenders. Carlton eight points in front. We're 23 minutes into this third quarter. Knocked out by uh, Shaw, punched away by Morris. Back there to Mark Kerr. He's grabbed. Could be holding the man or just holding the ball. He dropped it like a hot spot. A good decision, I thought, Lou. So did I, Bob. Free kick to go to Ricky Barn. Down there, a hand pass coming over now. Ball kicked up by Worthington. It looks a bit uh, sore on that leg to me. Out to Dill, and he'll Dill's away from his opponent, Edwards. He'll land this well in the goal square. There's a chance now for Mark McClure. They're all going. At the back of the pack is Byrne, and it's through for one point, and Carlton are nine points in front. Front now they're eight goals 11 59 to Collingwood 7 8 50 and we're approaching the 24 and a half minute mark of this third quarter the grand final of 1979 between Carlton and Collingwood coming to you live through the Channel 7 network it's going to be a pretty exciting last quarter too I think between these two sides they'll really throw everything at each other clump seemingly took the mark and the umpire has paid a free kick actually it's not the mark it's a free kick to Robert clump a little bit short of center half forward clump in for the kick now could almost be a mark down there to Worthington, and the umpire says, yes, sir, all clear. Worthington still looking very proppy, though. Former West Australian. And torpedo punt kick. And has plenty of distance in it, too. Edwards was up. Trying to get clear, and let's see, it's Keogh. He's caught with the ball. And the free kick to go Collingwood's way to be taken by Renee Kink. A little bit short of the centre circle. A dirty day for Rene Kink as he boots the ball long towards uh, Kevin Morris, actually over his head. Southby missed the mark, picked up by Brewer. He snaps at the goals. That's going close. Is, is it a mark or a point? I think it's a point. Shaw sure, was over the line. Bad luck for the Collingwood skipper. So one point to the Magpies to make the difference just that little bit less. Let's see the snapshot by Brewer. It goes pretty close to the line, and no doubt about it, you'll see Shaw was definitely over it. And the score, 51 to 59. Eight points the difference in the grand final. As the ball driven back into play, almost a mark to Collingwood to Derek Shaw, but it's a free kick to Carlton to be taken for them by Mike Fitzpatrick. And from left half back, the road scholar to the half forward line. Looks for Mackay. McCormick's right with him. 
and showing better pace and picks it up well in trouble drops the ball free kick no play on says the umpire interesting decision from umpire kevin smith it's going to be a free kick to uh, renee kink at a 15 meter penalty against robert clomp starting to look a bit better now renee kink just the same isn't he bob well, uh, he, uh, he's picked up a couple of kicks in the last uh, moment of play because he's getting in front of Klomp, but Klomp's still putting a lot of pressure on him. More from behind, couldn't take the mark. Davis is in there also. Southby, always safe in defence for Carlton, goes towards the muddy centre of the ground. They all missed the mark there. Mackay and McCormack. Now towards Fitzpatrick, away he goes now. Fitzpatrick, pretty fast for a big fellow. A long kick up towards McClure, who's got the set and almost took the mark. Sheldon racing into goals and puts it through for the Blues. Ken Sheldon's second goal and Carlton looking good. What a great piece of play as we check the scores. Collingwood, 7-9, 51, trail Carlton by 14 points. The Blues, 9-11, 65. We watch again on the replay as Mark McClure, a great effort to Mark, and Sheldon showing tremendous pace to break away from the tackle. Uh, it wasn't actually a tackle. I think Magro desperately dived, to, was prepared to grab the foot if he could and uh, pull him to the ground because he knew that Sheldon would have run on into the open goal as it turned out. A great roving by Ken Sheldon. 27 and a half minutes gone of this uh, third quarter. And Carlton in front by 14 points and uh, looking pretty good to me. Up they go. No, they both missed that. Moore and Fitzpatrick got picked up by Buckley. He's been a real battle short kick and a mark here to McConville. McConville uh, there at centre half forward and Carlton really going to attack now. Up the side of his boot. Oh, he's marked it. He's marked it, Harms. He's marked it. But Gully had to get around his opponent that time, was off the side of the boot, and he really grabbed that one as if he meant it. I thought it was a pass. No, I couldn't say that. <laughs> but luck's a forge, and that's the way it goes when you start to uh, when you start to get in front. He's already kicked one goal, and he's only about, uh, well, he'd be about 25 metres out from goal. There he fires now. And what's the result? I think he may be off target. It's through for one point. We'll see this mark again. You watch it. Here he goes. He's got to get around his opponent. Look at him running around there to get around. He got around okay. He was desperate to get it. And that's just the way that Carlton are playing at the moment. So it's nine goals, 12, 66 Carlton to Collingwood, 7, 9, 51. Ball back out there towards centre half forward. Comes out to Keogh and Carlton are clear again. A long shot for goal. Look at uh, McClure and uh, Pickett having a go there. But the umpire may have found a free kick. It'll go to Billy Pickett. But McClure is actually doing the right thing. He's keeping picking out of the game, really, by hanging on there and uh, allowing the fellas to have a pot shot. Out it goes to Young. Nearly grabbed that mark. Down they go left and right again. Mackay picks it up. He's clear. A hand pass coming over to Armstrong. Fires for the goals. Falls a bit short on Billy Pickett and McClure go down again. It's Billy Pickett coming up with the ball. Billy Pickett at full bank. 29 minutes gone. And Carlton in front by uh, 15 points at the moment. Umpires found a free kick. It'll go to Carlton. Ricky Barham's not too happy about that. Look at him going crook at the umpire. This gives Young a chance to score a goal because he's only about 35 metres out on the right side for a right footer. Not a bad sort of a kick either. It's coming around beautifully for a goal. Things are not looking too good for the Magpies at the moment. 29 and a half minutes gone. And we see Carlton, 10 goals, 12, 72 to Collingwood, 7, 9, 51. A difference of 21 points. And it's a good way to go to the last quarter, Bobby. Oh, very good, uh, Lou. And it's interesting that uh, Carlton's comeback again really started. And I'm not saying that Percy Jones should have gone off the ground, but Fitzpatrick, uh, while he's been there, has had a lot of life in the legs. And uh, Peter Moore having to tackle both uh, Jones and Fitzpatrick has made a difference. Way underway again, Fitzpatrick. Oh, he let it go. Kink out to uh, Anderson who kicks Collingwood up towards their half forward line now but the Carlton defence through Southby standing really firm at the moment they're not going to let the Magpies in through the mud they go and it's going to be uh, a ball up I think Alan Edwards couldn't quite make ground there he started off the game in a blaze of glory but has been held I tell you what, Pete, that defence of Carlton since about halfway through the second quarter has been magnificent. Well, the difference then was 28 points in favour of Collingwood and Carlton have pegged them back and gone to a handy lead themselves since. I think we'll see another ball up, 30 minutes gone, in fact, in excess of in the third quarter. So the siren imminent here at the Melbourne Cricket Ground as we await the ball up. It'll be thrown in the air by umpire Bill Deller. He couldn't bounce it there. 
Fitzpatrick, there's the siren. It's three-quarter time in the 79 grand final. And the scores, Collingwood, 7-9-51. Trailing Carlton, 10-12, 72. And here's Barry Cable. Melbourne and West Australian Rover, who this morning was named Football Personality of the Year by North Melbourne. Well done, Barry. Thank you very much, Peter. Yes, it was quite an honour, actually, and uh, I was very pleased to receive the uh, award. You played in the last grand final North uh, Collingwood played in in 1977, and they collapsed in the first grand final, the drawn grand final. Are the same? Is it the same thing happening today? Well, they certainly looked like it towards the end of that second quarter. I thought the first quarter they looked as though they were going to run all over Carlton, and even halfway through the second quarter, but uh, Carlton certainly have got themselves back into the game from looking really bad. And uh, I don't know whether Collingwood now will go on with it or whether Carlton will uh, slow up. As a small man yourself, did you expect Collingwood to place enormous pressure on the Carlton little men? Yes, I did. As a matter of fact, uh, I picked Collingwood to win today. I think that they, uh, they might be a little bit too good for Carlton. But you can see with Carlton, with their running game, they look very good. And they certainly look good in that last 10 minutes. Do you think they can still win it? I still think Collingwood can still win. But I think they've got the uh, test on them now. And we'll soon see if they, uh, they've learned something from 77. And Barry, are you missing it? Oh, well, I guess everybody that's played here on the MCG, and you get all these people here, 100,000. Uh, yes, I, I'd like to be out there again. Thanks, Barry. But thank you, Peter. And there you can see the shot from the Clark Mobile Crane. Estimated crowd here today at the Melbourne Cricket Ground in excess of 100,000. Very hard to tell, actually, because a lot of standing areas underneath the shaded areas of the stands. And we're set for what I'm sure is going to be a very, very exciting last quarter. 51 to 72, a difference of 21 points, remembering, of course, that Collingwood led Carlton by 28 points midway through the second quarter. And I'm going to get a prediction from Bob and Lou. What do you think, Lou? Well, at the moment, uh, since about 10 minutes before uh, half time, I felt that Carlton were playing the stronger football. They look very good towards the end of that quarter, and they're playing on very well indeed at the moment. Well, uh, Bob? I'll go along with that, and uh, as one of the players responsible, and it looks like uh, Collingwood have put Magro into the centre. Uh, Byrne going to a back pocket, which would probably mean Morris on a half back flank. Final quarter of the 1979 Grand Final at the Melbourne Cricket Ground. Tap down. There's really nobody's way, and the free kick coming out to uh, the Magpies to Russell Olsen, who copped a very hefty knock earlier in the match. Olsen's long kick up towards half forward. Collingwood badly needing some goals, but the Carlton defence has been pretty firm most of the afternoon. And Banks claiming he was whacked on the head and uh, should get a free kick, but the umpire disagrees. He's the one that counts. As we await the ball up, Fitzpatrick tapped it down. On the shoulder, says the umpire, and a free kick going to Dennis Banks this time, and I guess he's pretty happy about that. Banks would be directly in front of Gong and about 45 to 50 metres out, and Gong here would really set the Magpies on the way to recovery. Banks. Comes in and fought. Dear, oh dear. Mistakes galore. That's not Collingwood's day, is it? Well, we'll know in about 30 minutes' time as the ball is picked up by Moore. He tries to go through the pack. Got it over to Kevin Morris. Morris up towards the full forward zone. Jessalenko, soccer tactics from Jezza. Gets the ball out to the mud patch on the centre wing position of the Melbourne cricket ground. Brewer, likewise soccer tactics. The ball very close to the boundary line. And it's picked up there by uh, Armstrong, the Carlton Ruck Rover. In turn towards the centre wing position again. A chance for Johnston, but he couldn't read the play. Keogh up towards half forward. Harms chasing. Out comes uh, Mark McClure. Snaps the ball back at goal. Burns down there for the Magpies. Harms goes straight through him. A chance for McConville. Anderson dives on top of the ball, but it uh, eludes him. Collingwood defending desperately as umpire Bill Deller comes in and decides to ball it up. One and a half minutes gone of the final term. A very crowded forward line it is down there. Let's see if he bounces it down or throws it in the air. Once again, Moore and Mackay. I think we'll have another ball up down there too, as uh, they can't get it clear. Well, you wouldn't want to be out there for uh, any money uh, amongst that mud and amongst all those players going in so desperately at the moment. Up it goes. Knocked out by Moore. Grabbed by Ulse. Not the side of his boot. Pushed back in out of Buckley. Trying to get clear. He's out. He fires, but he's kicked it out of bounds, I think. Or maybe one point. 
So they've got a lead of 22 points now, Carlton, and it's going to be very hard for Collingwood to peg them back because uh, both sides very tight. It's been a hard slogging game. That first 10 minutes, I, think, I don't think I've seen anything like it in my life for an opening of a grand final. And they'd be pretty tired at the moment, Lou. Both sides, and a lead of 22 points is equivalent to about six goals. Waiting now for the uh, ball to come back into play. We're at the uh, two and a half minute mark, so there's a long way to go. And if Collingwood are good enough, of course, they can win this game. There's a long kick back into play, well up towards the centre of the ground. Renee Kink taken off the pink by Buckley. Buckley's been a very good player. There's a chance for McClure at the back. He got up pretty high, but well marked there by Billy Pickin down there in the back pocket. Well, he's getting up to have a go at him. I wouldn't worry about that. A hand pass coming over to Byrne. Byrne kicks the ball long. Going after it now is Moore and Fitzpatrick. They're both showing plenty of pace. It'll beat them both, I think, and it's pushed out of bounds. That was good play on the part of Fitzpatrick. At least he's kept it well within the range of the uh, Carlton forward line. It's about half forward for them. Knocked out by uh, Fitzpatrick. Grabbed by Anders. Has a bit of trouble getting it up. A hand pass coming over to Olsen. Olsen with a long kick up there towards the full forward zone. South be in front. Out it goes to Shaw, but he gets a touch of the fumbles. Edwards has got it now. He's getting away. A hand pass back to Carlson. Another one back there in the forward pocket of Shaw. He fires. He slips. Bad luck as he tries to pick it up. There's Klomp trying to break through the pack. And it's out of bounds. Umpire said dropping the ball against him, I think. Oh, gee. That's what he said, Luke. That's what he said. He said, you dropped it. By golly, he hardly touched it. Renee King's got the kick. He's right on the boundary line. You can see the goals. This is a difficult shot. If he gets this one, I'll make it at 16 points, the difference. And it should liven Collingwood up. He turns around, fires as he put it through. He's off target and through for one point. So it's 21 points, the difference, at the four-minute mark of the last quarter of the 1979 Grand Final. Coming to you live through Channel 7. There's that kick again. Slips over you, what's a clop? He gets a free kick against him here. Well, well, you pick well it up they did, the umpire was right. OK, ball on the half-back line now, and it's driven up towards the centre wing position. No mark played by the umpire as uh, Ireland tries to get it out to Magro. Magro's long-hand pass is taken by Kink at half-forward. Kink looking for someone a little bit nearer the goals, but McConville's there and taps it over his head to Southby. Jeff Southby, not a good hand pass from him, but Armstrong under plenty of pressure, but he gets around two opponents. Well played, Barry Armstrong. Towards the boundary he goes and finds Robert Klomp. Klomp looks for Buckley, but it's smothered and out of bounds. Collingwood still in the match, but the Magpies have certainly got the job in front of them. As Bob Skilton mentioned, the players would be pretty tired right now as we await the boundary throw in. Fitzpatrick gets it down. He's been rucking very well today, and he'll be in line for the Norm Smith medal to be presented at the conclusion of the match. Morris, soccer tactics, almost a free kick against him as it goes to Anderson and Magro. Magro from half forward, not a long kick by the Collingwood back pocket player who's now seemingly on the ball, knocked away by Davis. Out towards Lee Carlson at left half forward. In he comes. Carlson gets his kick in, but well smothered by Rod Austin. That was beautifully done. And the boundary throw in the end result. So Collingwood can't seem to do much right at the moment. As Carlton have got them tied up in knots. Fitzpatrick, Edwards, goes to Armstrong. A high kick doesn't cover 10 metres. No, the umpire said play on, and Edwards has caught with the ball, and so it's going to be a ball-up situation as Duell and Fitzpatrick collared him simultaneously. 50, uh, 50 metres out from goal, roughly, as we await the ball up. Umpire Kevin Smith. Fitzpatrick to Armstrong. Good ruck play. Armstrong back in turn towards the centre wing position. Keogh on Ireland, and he got one for his corner. Right on the ear. Trevor Keogh. Looking for Mackay. In front and takes the mark. One of the best aerialists in the VFL, and he'll drive Carlton deep into attack, David Mackay. He's gone for the long kick, looking for McClure. Pick on! Oh, what a mark! The mark of the grand final. Look at that. What did you think, Lou? Magnificent mark. A mark, uh, the ball slipped. You thought it was a dry day. The ball back there to centre-half back for Collingwood. Down it comes now. Magro playing in the centre, drives it back over the centre position. Dill goes for the punch. There's Fitzpatrick backing up. Well, he's played a great game. A hand pass out to Austin, having trouble picking it up, but finally picks it up now. Out towards Sheldon and Byrne. There's Barham flying too. Young doing the wise thing, stays down, picks it up, goes for a pass. Looking out there for his teammate Johnson. He's found him. Johnson's kick is not a good one. In goes Morris. He goes down. Umpire's found a free kick. It could go to Morris. And Morris to take that free kick towards the back pocket position. 
Carlton are in front by 21 points. We're at the seven-minute mark, and both sides very tired. There's a mark to Edwards. Edwards and uh, Kink have fallen out of the game. Kink came back a little bit towards the end of that quarter, but Edwards was a very good player early. Punched away by Carlton's uh, Fitzpatrick. There's Buckley trying to get it out. In goes Banks, finally picked up by Keo. Over to Jeff Southby, a short pass. That's OK, and Dill's got the ball now, and he'll set them going as he shoots it down there, looking for his teammates. They're all flying. Down they go. Byrne gives a hand pass. Back to Morris, out there at half-back. Collingwood still tries. He tries to find Edwards. It goes off the top of his hand. Fitzpatrick gives it to Dill, and Dill drives it long back there towards the forward line. Punched away by Moore. And there we see Bragging Kluwer. Here's uh, Mackay. Mackay giving it over to Sheldon. He's grabbed. He's clear, a hand pass to Harms, and Carlton swinging to a tap up to full four to mark the Billy Pickin again. He's played a mighty fine game for Collingwood too. Ball kicked out wide. Chance for Magro to mark. He's out there on his own. He's got a ton of room to move about with. Still uh, at the moment, uh, 21 points in favour of Carlton. The ball out there on the wing, possessed bar and going for Roman. Can this fella go? Boots it up towards the forward pocket. Jezelenko and Shaw, the two captains. Down goes Jezelenko and Shaw's there. He's grabbed by the leg and the umpire's found it. But that was a pretty wise move on the part of Jezelenko. He knew if he got away, it had an open run to goal. Now he's got to have a, a direct shot, Bob. Well, it possibly so, uh, but I don't think Jezelenko realised that the ball was going to be picked up by McConville. Now we see here uh, Jezelenko and Shaw right on screen. A beautiful shot as uh, Shaw about to break away. Jezelenko <laughs> making sure that he doesn't. And I don't think he realised that McConville was coming in. Waiting on Shaw to have this shot from about uh, 35 metres out, right on the boundary line. Not a bad sort of a kick. It's not coming around enough. And the difference is 20 points now at the nine minute mark. Collingwood go to 7 11 53 to Carlton 10 13 73. 73. So 20 points the difference as Jeff Southby prepares to boot the ball back into play. More up high, uh, uh, Anderson pursued by Francis, he fires at the goals, it's well off target though in towards the 10 metre square, Davis, Davis steps for goal, that's coming around, OK, it might be a goal, no, yes it is, Collingwood still in the match. Davis's fourth goal bringing light to the Magpie heart. And he says, let's go, see if we can get back into it, we check the scores now. It's Collingwood, 8-11, 59, Carlton, 10-13, 73. We just saw it on replay there as uh, Davis, and they're the sort of things, Lou, that can lift the side, and it'll be interesting to see now just uh, who gets the next one. Uh, Collingwood right back into the game again, and if they can kick the next goal, it'll really uh, kick them along. It's Moore and Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick got the tap out. Harms is there. It goes past him, but he was expecting the hand pass and didn't get it. Weirmouth. Away he goes, Ronnie Weirmouth, and Collingwood supporters haven't given up yet. Look at this little fella go. Ronnie Weirmouth, straight through the glue pot, goes for the par. Successful, Carlson. Lee Carlson, 55 metres out from goal, and he's directly in front. A chance to put the Magpies right back into the match, but it'd need to be a very good kick. In the goal square, Edwards and Davis. With Ray Shaw as we watch the kick, look at that! It's a goal! Oh, what a great kick from Carlson, and the Magpies are back in the Premiership fight! What a kick! The scores! Collingwood, 9-11, 65, Carlton, 10-13, 73. Again on replay, a beautiful pass from Weirmouth to Carlson, and uh, under the, with the pressure that was on Carlson there for him to go back and kick a goal, a real great goal. 11 minutes gone, and eight, eight points the difference. Can the Magpies get up? Knocked out by Fitzpatrick, it goes out there now, a chance for Collingwood to get it clear. There's Magro, he's grabbed by his own man, Olsen. He's out, Olsen's in the way again. Olsen gets it out, but the umpire's going to ball it. I don't think he knew it was uh, Magro. He grabbed him, you know, then. Oh, dear he, idea. He, he could well have concussion, Lou, the whack that he got earlier. There it goes, Fitzpatrick and Moore. Finally, Moore is going to get a free kick against him, and it'll go there to Fitzpatrick out there towards the half-back line. Fitzpatrick ready to drive it deep down there towards that half four. There's Mackay coming out. This looks dangerous. Mackay at centre half four. They're in front by eight points. Eleven and a half minutes gone of the last quarter. There's a lead coming up there to, to McClure and a great mark. He got away from picking that time. And he's well within kicking distance. He'd be about uh, 40 metres out if that. And McClure has already kicked two goals. They're in front by eight points, uh, Carlton. They're at, at uh, I think, 28, 22 points in front at one stage of this quarter. 
McClure ready to sight the goals up. He knows this is a vital kick. Comes around too far. Umpire set through for one point. So the difference is nine points now. 12 minutes gone and every second counts in this game and both sides mighty tied because it's been a tough slogging game. There we see the uh, kick uh, by uh, Mackay and a great mark by McClure in front of uh, uh, Billy Pickham that time. Ball out towards that uh, half-back line. There's a chance for Rene Kink to pick it up. He's clear, a hand pass over to Anderson. And now it's Collingwood's turn to swing into attack. A long kick down there towards... Uh, to, there's the old Ray Lively himself. And it's a good mark taken there, a little short of centre half-back by Jezelenko. 13 minutes gone. Jezelenko playing in defence for the last quarter and a half. Anderson. McCormack in there for Collingwood. And umpire Kevin Smith decides to ball it up on the centre wing position, adjacent to the VFL uh, emblem. Fitzpatrick to Klomp. And Klomp well shepherded, his kick up towards half forward. Morris is there, Johnston's there, he's caught. A hand passes to Harms. Back to Johnston, danger for Collingwood as Johnston lines up the goals from 30 metres out and he's missed. And so that makes the difference, 10 points in favour of Carlton. 13 minutes gone in the quarter, Collingwood still live, but they now need two goals. Can they get them? 65 to 75. The VFL Grand Finals through HSV and Associated Stations throughout Australia. Fitzpatrick, Weirmouth. Weirmouth driving Collingwood into attack now, up towards Rene Kink. Oh, he spilt the mark. A chance for Klump, but Kink's still in there, fighting his heart out for Collingwood. Buckley, in comes little Anderson. Over to Wearmouth. Collingwood still fighting hard. Wearmouth up towards the full forward zone. Oh, great mark brought in by uh, Peter McConville. That was a ripper. In he comes. It'll go around the boundary line. Olsen in the front posse. Fitzpatrick up high. Tried to tap the ball clear. It comes to Ireland. Over to Anderson. To Kink. He lines up the goals. It's slamming goalwards. The difference is four points. Four points the difference in the 1979. Grand final as King puts it through. Let's check the scores for you. Coll uh, Collingwood 10 11 71. Carlton 10 15 75. Well, anything can happen now because there's only 14 minutes gone of this quarter, and it's a matter of what side can stand up and last the distance, Bobby. Well, Anderson hasn't uh, had the greatest of days, Lou, but in the last five minutes of play, he's really lifted his game. Back to the set of Fitzpatrick and Moore. It comes out to Olsen. He gets the ball back towards Collingwood's half forward. Has a chance. A good mark there to Barham. And Collingwood ready to go into attack. A hand pass down to Magro. Up there towards the full forward zone. Davis there punched out by Jesse. Jezelenko and the ball is out of bounds in the forward pocket position. This crowd. Oh, Jezelenko's hurt his leg. That's bad news. He's limping badly. Don't tell me he's got to go off the ground because that'll be a sad blow to Carlton. Up they go. The ball of this duel trying to get out. It'll be a pile up here and the umpire's going to play it safe and ball it up about 20 metres out from the Collingwood goal. Jezelenko in trouble there, bad trouble. Well, Carlton a bit slow, Lou, to get somebody down into that back pocket. Up it goes now, knocked out again. A chance for the South Bay to clear it away. Out it goes there towards Young, it's out of bounds. It'll be a throw in from that half forward on about 50 metres around from the Collingwood goal. At the moment, Carlton the four points in front. And Jezelenko will be going off the ground. And Marku coming back on, it looks like Brown coming off. And the ball cleared away by Armstrong. More going up. Uh, McCormick trying to get it out, he's clear, and Collingwood going to attack again. The ball up there towards the full forward zone. Rene Kink setting himself, and the ball is finally forced out by McConville. Out of bounds, Jez Jezelenko coming off, he looks in pain too. He's only got 17 on the ground because Brown's come off. Jezelenko has, as you can see, him being carried off the ground. Well, Brown, Brown not realising that he's, he should be out there. OK, the ball back, there's a, uh, the wrong man, Duel. A chance for Wearmouth to get it back to Barham, a snap for goal, and what's the result? It won't make the list, it'll go out of bounds. Nearly hit the line, but it's out of bounds, and a penalty free kick down there to Austin. Only four points the difference in favour of Carlton. Still a ton of time for anyone to win this game at the 16 and a half minute mark, as we wait now for Austin to bring the ball back into play. Jesse Lenko getting uh, a huge round of applause as he comes around the boundary line, but back to the play, Moore got high. Tried for the screamer, it didn't work though. Anderson grabbed, we're not in possession, he must get a free kick, surely, no. It's going Carlton's way and it will be taken by Francis. Francis up from the back pocket, goes for the long kick. Towards the centre wing position, Johnson was behind the pack, it's socket away by Keogh. 
Down towards the half forward line. Harms tries to pick it up. Buckley gets it out to Harms now. He's pursued by Brewer, but he can't catch him. Harms fires at the goals, but he's off target. It's rolling towards the boundary line, and Harms almost makes ground. He taps it back to Shell, and that's a goal! Oh, what a goal! If you don't mind, Harms is almost as quick as the kick. That's his third, Sheldon. Oh, that was the goal of the match. Although Harms didn't kick it, it was a remarkable piece of play. A remarkable piece of play. Let's watch the Jesselenko injury while we check the scores, and Jesselenko falling very, very heavily there. It's uh, Collingwood 10 11 71. Carlton 11 15 81. Back to 10 points the difference. Back to the center now. Can Collingwood get back? Oh, he missed that more completely. There's a chance for Mark Coo to get out. But he's grabbed and the umpire will ball it up at center field. A little bit down towards Collingwood center half forward position. Carlton in front by 10 points. 18 minutes gone. Still plenty of time for the Magpies. If they're good enough. Carlton hanging on. Knocked out by Moore. Chance here for Ireland to get clear. He's in the mud pile there, and the umpire's going to ball it up. This time it's towards Carlton, centre half forward. Only about 10, minute, uh, 10 metres away from the centre. But Gully can feel the tension up here in this uh, commentator's box. Andrew Allen goes for the punch, pushed away again. Has a chance for Shaw. He picks it up, a hand pass to Morris. Another long one to Carlson out there on his own. He's in trouble. He's grabbed high around the neck, and the umpire set a free kick. He could have got 15 metres too, Lou. I think he was acting a bit that time. Carlton in front by 10 points. Collingwood have got to get their game goes. The ball comes back to Big Fitzpatrick. He dropped that mark. Edwards can't pick it up either. He piles on top of the ball. Dool and Fitzpatrick in there with him, and the umpire will ball it up at centre half forward, about 65 metres out from the Collingwood goal. That'd be about a mile and a half if you're playing out there too. I'm not kidding. So it's back to the centre, back to the bounce. Moore and Fitzpatrick, they've had a great duel. Moore gets it out, but Olsen's in the way. Gets a short pass out there to uh, Shaw, and Collingwood going to attack again. Down it goes, there's Brown going through. His kick is out wide, a chance for Mark Koo to mark, and he does. Mark Koo on the ground there, out at uh, half-back, and of course, Jezelenko leaving the ground with a very painful uh, leg injury. Ball kicked back towards centre field, a chance now for Francis to mark. He's been a darn good player for Carlton. Waiting on Mark Coo to send them back into attack again. The ball uh, falls short and a good mark to Johnson. Got away from Morris and he's out there a little short of the half forward line. A long kick. And a good mark to Brewer playing down there at half back or in the back pocket. I'm not quite sure where he's playing. Played most of his football on the attacking side of the ground. When they kick and plump, they both go for it. Down they go, and no one's giving up here. We see Johnson get it out, and the ball driven back there to uh, Harms. A hand pass out there to Armstrong. He's getting away, but he's attacked here by, uh, by Brewer and also Andrew Ireland, who can't get a fair hand pass that time and goes for the boundary line, and it's out of bounds. 20 minutes gone, and still Carlton in front by uh, 10 points, I think it is. We've got the policeman standing in front of the scoreboard over there, and uh, we're at the 20-minute mark. That's the score. 71 plays, 81. 20 minutes gone and still plenty of time if they're good enough to make pies. Stack up there and the umpire player's going to ball up about, uh, let's see, uh, 40 metres out from the Carlton goal. Well, if Carlton get the next goal, though, I think it's curtains for the Magpies. Collingwood must get the next one to keep their chances alive. And it's on the Carlton half-forward line now as Mark Hu tries to go after it. Picked up by Klump. A short pass from Robert Klump to Sheldon. This is danger. Sheldon, a short pass. But his man down there was covered. That was Harms. Olsen over to Weirmouth. Back to Brewer, and the Magpies can get it clear here. They want to get the run down the ground. Ross Brewer from centre-half back. Brewer looking out there for Carlson, who's on his own, and Lee Carlson bursts away now. He'll drive Collingwood up into their attacking zone, but straight to Jeff Southby, away from Banks. And ever-reliable Southby taking the mark across the half-back zone for the Blues. Barham in front of uh, Armstrong on that occasion and the ball over the boundary line to be thrown back into play about 80 to 85 metres from the behind post on Collingwood's right half forward flank Ruckman Edwards contesting but more over the top now Collingwood small men there where are they there's Magro Duel right there with him a free kick or is it a ball up a ball up says umpire Bill Denner on Collingwood's half forward line with uh, 22 minutes gone there's the Collingwood Brain Trust, Tommy Hafey and Ron Richards. I guess they'd be pretty worried at the moment. Collingwood need two goals. They need them quickly. They've got about eight minutes in which to score them, I'd reckon, as long as Carlton don't score any. Fitzpatrick 
Tries to get the ball clear of the pack. They're all having trouble down there. Marku comes out with it eventually and shoots out the hand pass. It wasn't a good one, and it's picked up eventually by Keo. Keo drives the Blues up to the centre wing position, looking for Johnston, who gets boot the ball very quickly, but he's put it out of bounds on the full. And the end result of that will be a penalty-free kick to Collingwood's Ross Brewer. He's at right half-back, Ross Brewer. A wobbly punt kick. Weirmouth in front. They still can't get it out of the pack. Olsen's there, Armstrong there. And likewise, Mike Fitzpatrick, and it's the ball-up situation on the centre wing position on the outer side of the ground. 22 and a half minutes have gone in the quarter. And still 10 points in front, Carlton. Out there on that wing position, Moore goes for the grab, couldn't pick it up. Keo has a fresh air shot. It's Olsen driving it down there towards Rene Kick. He should have marked it. He tried to go for the big punch. And there it is, though. It'll be a ball up there. McConville pounced on him straight away. Thought he could have grabbed that, Bobby. I think it must have been touched off the boot, Lou. I can't give any other reason why Kink wouldn't have tried for the mark. Ball comes back to Moore. Plops in there too. Weirmouth trying to get it. Went between Fitzpatrick's leg. He can't get it out. The umpire set a free kick to Carlton. And that's the one they want. We're 23 minutes into this last quarter. And they're still 10 points in front. By golly, that's been a tough game. And both these sides will be that tired. They're that tired now, as a matter of fact. They can only raise a gallop. And they're putting in superhuman efforts to keep themselves going. Out it goes there to the half-back flank. Mackay flies. Couldn't hold the mark, but the umpire's found a free kick. It'll go to McCormack. Out there on that half-back line. Time ticking away. The Magpies need two goals to win this match. Punched away by Duell. Back it goes out there to uh, Johnson. A long kick. A good chance now for Brewer to take the mark. And Brewer takes it at half-back, looking for someone to give it to. But I'd try and drive it down there as quickly as I possibly could. That's a long kick out there towards the wing position. Ah, oh, there's a good mark to Johnson. He's been a very handy player for Carl today. Two Collingwood players collided there. They better get up quickly. One is Edwards too, I notice. Another's Banks. And the other's Banks. And the mark out here to Armstrong. Armstrong out there on that wing position. They're both still down, Lou, those Well, players. Edwards hasn't moved, but uh, there we see Armstrong going for a short pass. It was juggled there by Young, but he's got a bit of time to kick it. He finally kicks it over there looking for Buckley. Smothers it well. He's grabbed. He's collared. It'll be holding the ball against him. I think we've got to agree, Bob, both these sides have put up a tremendous performance today. You've got to admire all, 30, all 40 players. Anyone who talks about the collie wobbles today, well, they don't know what they're talking about because both sides have fought it out well. We see a fresh air shot that time again by McConville, driven back by France. It's a chance for Brewer to mark again. A hand pass to Moore. Collingwood trying to get it down there. It's a shocking kick off the side of the boot. Out it goes to Ricky Barham. He's away from his opponent. And look at him go. He's trying to bounce the ball. He's actually bounced. He got one in the back. It'll be a free kick to Ricky Barham. A clever free kick, though. We're at the 25-minute mark. It won't be a long quarter because there hasn't been many goals kicked for the quarter. Four goals, so I'd say about 29. We'll there we see him pushed him in the back. No doubt it was a free kick that uh, Duell desperate just to try and stop Barham. The kick by Barham is up there, not doesn't reach the distance. They all fly, they go high. A chance now for uh, Olsen to get out of this. And Olsen out there, he finally gets, he said he threw it. And he's not too happy about it either. He looks more like Al Jolson, his face is covered in mud. <laughs> and it's Klopp who's been a very good player for Carlton. Well, there's been a lot of good players for both sides. It'd be unfair to say that. There's uh, flying high was Harms over to Francis and Francis is clear as he drives the ball wide out there looking there for Sheldon. Burns going after it. Sheldon's got a chance here. They both go down. Burns first to recover at the Brewer again. Collingwood still trying to get it up there. And a mark to Andrew Allen out there on the wing position. 26 minutes gone and still Carlton 10 points in front. Island up towards half forward and McConville has he taken the mark? No! Wearmouth's got it over to Edwards. The Carlton fans weren't too happy with that. Edwards runs it and fires at the goals. And what's he done with it? I think he's missed. No, it's a goal! The difference is again four points. Any team can still win the 79 grand final. Let's check the scores. It's Collingwood 11-11, 77. The Carlton 11-15, 81. We just saw it on replay there, Peter. And McConville, you could have paid the mark. But then again, when you're on your own, you should hold those. It's, he should have run it down the hands and into the arms and uh, McConville definitely should have pulled it in. My gee, the goal umpire tricked me there when he ran right into the point post. I thought he'd missed that one. However, it's four points the difference. Peter Moore taps the ball out, taken away by Harms. He goes towards right half forward for the Blues. The Magpies need the next goal. And if Carlton get it, it'll wrap it up for them, I'd suggest, with 27 minutes gone for the final quarter.
There'd be about two or three minutes to go, Peter. And not long. Any team can still win it. Moore and Mackay. Picked up by Byrne. He doesn't get it too far, though. There's uh, Wearmouth falling into the back of Buckley, who gets the kick in over towards the half-forward line. Ireland and Harms. The ball tapped away. Is it a free kick? No. Play on, says the umpire. It's scooped out to Armstrong now. Armstrong, quick to get boot to ball. Up to Mark McClure. McClure with a chance to wrap the game up. He gave it to Mackay with a bad hand pass, though. Peter Moore and also Brewer in there. Here's Mark who This could wrap it up. He fires. He's missed. Five points the difference. At the 27 and a half minute mark, five points the difference. It's 11-16, 82 Carlton, Collingwood 11 of 11, 77. I'll tell you what, it's not enough to give a commentator a heart attack, a short pass out to Brewer. And he's been a pretty good player since moved out of that half-back line. Collingwood trying to get it around there. As it go for Magro, he's going for the mark, but the umpire set a free kick for interference. 28 minutes gone. Fire Is there ready. time for Collingwood to get up? They're five points. There's the fire. The score, the final scores. Carlton 11 16, 82. Once again, calling with the bridesmaid. 11 goals, 11 77. Well, what a grand final. It had everything, didn't it? It really had everything. It had toughness in the first few minutes. It had great marks. And it will be celebrations into the long hours of tomorrow morning at Princes Park. Full credit to Collingwood, though, they fought the match right out. They got within four points earlier in the final term, and then five points, and that was as close as they were to get. Surprisingly, a rather short final term. Only, uh, it was just on 28 minutes. And Carlton players, officials, and supporters, very, very happy. There's uh, George Harris even smiling. That's the first time I've ever seen that happen. As the Prime Minister, Mr Malcolm Fraser, Quite a number of uh, parliamentarians here this afternoon at the VFL luncheon. There was Billy Sneddon. There was the. Uh, here's the. Uh, Sorry for the, the VFL delay. Dr. Alan On behalf of the Victorian Football League, I would like to thank you, the public, the Victoria, for supporting us, this game, this great game, for season 1979. But I'd also like to take the opportunity of congratulating the players for putting in a magnificent season. The Norm Smith Medal. The VFL have instituted this medal in the memory of the late Norm Smith. This is the first year of the award and it will go on. It's for the best player in the grand final. And this year it will be presented by the wife of the late Norm Smith, Mrs. Marge Smith. And I would like her to come forward onto the dais. The winner of the Norm Smith medal for season 1979 is Wayne Harms. Also on behalf of the Victorian Football League, we'd like to congratulate the 1979 Premiership Club, Carlton. And to present the Premiership Medallions and the Premiership Cup, I'd like to introduce to you the Governor of Victoria, His Excellency, the Honourable Sir Henry Winnicky. Thank you, Mr. President. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, as patron of the Victorian Football League, it's a great honour to present Premiership Cup and the medallions. But before so doing, on behalf of you all, I offer both teams 
our warmest congratulations for a magnificent game under rather difficult conditions. And our special congratulations to the captain, coach, and the members of the Carlton team. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it can be great pleasure to present the medallions and the Premiership Cup for 1979. Peter Jones. Mark McClure. Little Jim Buckley. Wayne Johnson. Rod Austin. David Mackay. Michael. Well, there we see Gunn. the Collingwood players going off the ground and they look terribly dejected and Finland tired and uh, they should be pretty Southie. proud. They lost it. They don't get the glory of Carlton, but by golly, they put up one of the greatest fights that Collingwood side's ever put up on the MCG. And you can go back as far as the start of the Collingwood history. Oh, I think it's a shame, Lou, that Alex someone's got to lose. Coup. That's right, and it uh, would have been a fitting result, a draw, but by golly, you ask those players to go out and front up again next week. It'll be too much. But Sheldon. full marks to Carlton, commiserations to Collingwood, and uh, it'll be a pretty set town there tonight at the Collingwood Football Club, I should imagine. Carlton have worked very hard and uh, when you work out the form for the year, they've been the form side. They've been on top of the league ladder for all the year and uh, they continued their good work today in winning the 1979 Grand Final. Trevor Keir. Possibly you could say that uh, it looked at, uh, got a bit shaky at one stage. Armstrong. Got a bit shaky at one stage and... Uh, you felt that Collingwood were going to bolt it in about uh, 15 minutes into the second quarter and they fought back and they actually led by 22 points in the last quarter and I thought, well, how far can't the game? Because they were playing strong football and on two occasions, Collingwood got within four points. And there's Alec Jezelenko and he did a marvellous job today. Well, I don't think he was a great player, but his inspiration on the ground was the most important thing, plus the fact that he's done such a marvellous job with Carlton taking the job when they, no one else, uh, well, they didn't want him to take it, actually. And, of course, there's Percy Jones. They're calling him up, possibly playing his last game. And no doubt, one of the greatest personalities that ever played football, whether it's Carlton or Collingwood or Richmond, doesn't matter who you're barracked for, you've got to admire him. He, he is a, a personality and a half, isn't he? And, Lou, it's not just his football ability that'll be missed by Carlton. Uh, clubs uh, often, uh, you know, look at players and they think, well, they're, you know, they're really struggling a little bit. But uh, there's first giving Jezzelinko a, a, a dose of champagne, and uh, I'm sure Alex doesn't mind. But uh, everyone at Carlton can justifiably be proud of both of the effort that Alex Jezzelinko and his team have really put in. As you said, Lou, they, had, they did lead right throughout the year. They were sitting on top of the ladder and uh, justifiably went on with the business and won the premiership. Well, there we see Alex Jezzelinko with a family... Uh bruised or it could be even broken ankle I think it is Bobby and uh, a very proud man and when you win the uh, the flag you don't worry about your injuries you, you say to yourself it's all worth it and of course Alec Gisolanko has done a marvellous job with Carlton and I'd say that he'll be their coach for many, many years. That'll make uh, Alec Jens uh, Jezelenko just about a fixture there because in two years he's got them to the grand final and winning the flag. A very, very jubilant uh, Carlton team. Half of them in Collingwood uh, jumpers uh, that they've swapped with their respective opponents. And the players do that out of a mirror, of a, you know, respect for their respective opponents. And they look back, uh, you know, in years to come and say, well, that was the player that I played against. Well, that's right. And uh, the crowd here for over 100,000 people. And it's only one city in the world could do this. It's only one game that could draw the crowd under such adverse conditions. Raining up till about uh, a minute before the start, or five minutes before the start of play. And all of a sudden, uh, God must have said, well, OK, this is a very important day. I'll cut the rain off for you. And it didn't rain any more throughout the day. And as the game, uh, as the day progressed, it got better and the conditions got better. There we see Alec Jezelenko with his ankle very heavily bandaged. He's being uh, helped by Klopp and Percy Jones and also the flying doormat, Bruce Still. And it'll be a sad day when uh, 
Ali, He's uh, walking better already. That's <laughs> right. He has got any pain at all. So Saturday, possibly Percy Jones' last game, and there he is singing a song, and I would say that Percy Jones may have a fr few friendly ales tonight. Ah, uh, just a quiet chance, I'd say. But it's, uh, he's very proud too because his mum and sister and brother have come over from Tasmania. His other brother's down from uh, Queensland and his nephew. And they're all here to see Percy Jones play. And I reckon his mum from Tasmania would be mighty proud. But Carlton have won this match 11-16, 82 to Collingwood, 11-11-77. A five-point win for the 1979 grand final to Carlton. They'll be a very happy uh, crowd down there at their celebrations tonight. I'd hate to go to the Collingwood one. There's nothing worse than going to a grand final do when you've lost the grand final, particularly by five points.